is Saturday night. I feel awesome. I am off work for the next week. It is vacation time, my friends. How do you do? And also, I have a nice, a nice frosty beverage. The only good thing on the Timmy's menu, in my opinion. Because honestly, if you are a true Canadian, you do know Tim Hortons sucks. But they make a good ice cap. How y'all doing? No Voron stuff tonight. No Voron stuff tonight. I've got tons of Voron stuff, but Toasty Boy's done. I gotta put the front door on. Figure out if I'm gonna put a screen on it, but Toasty Boy's done. It's done. It's done. We're past that. We're done. We're on to bigger things. Not necessarily better. I have a box. What's in the box? I don't know for sure. But before that, before that, before that, we're gonna have a little project. Last week's stream with the Toasty Boy. We printed that little fighter jet. My son loved that fighter jet, okay? It's, it's his now. It's gone. It's in his toy box. It's his toy now. And I was gonna print some more of those. So I went on our sponsor's website, thanks, and I went to go print another one of these. However, right next to the fighter jet, is this little project here. Ooh, I'm not logged in right now. But anyways, this little project here. This is fresh off the print bed. Enjoy the uh, probably blown out colors. This is a pull copter. If you want to build one of these, you can go to the link below and print one of these off. This is like a 40 minute print on my V2. So we're going to start off the stream with this little itty bitty project because why not? Because I need to make more of these because my son loves these things. It's a spinny thing. Yes. So print it off some little M2 self tap and screws, a smaller Allen key. and put it together. So tonight's stream is gonna be a nice little relaxing stream. Um, we are gonna build a printer. Now, I'm not 100% sure what printer it is. It is a JG Maker, uh, JG Aurora, JG Maker is the name of the company. Um, several months back when I was roughly about the point I actually hit about 5,000 subscribers, I got like five emails from different printer companies saying, hey, if we send you a printer, will you do something with it? And I'm like, you know what? I do a weekly stream. I need content. Sure, send me your printer. I will not review it, but I will build it on stream. And whatever happens, happens. So if you send me something that's uh, not great, we will have some fun with it. Well, one of those printers showed up. Uh, when's the next Voron build? I will be touching on that in a second. Let me get this built. So, this is called a pole copter. We got this little itty bitty ring now that I've made. You take the key that goes through there. We take our little blades that goes on the key. Put it on your ring finger or any finger. There's multiple different sizes for this. And, uh, oh, I didn't pull it fast enough. Ah, I ruined it. I ruined the dramatic show. Okay. A little bit more power. No, oh, it would help if I had it the right way. There's an up and down to these. Damn it. I've actually got a bunch of these printed out upstairs because my son is loving these because he's three and he just chases these. Ah, either way, there's a video on my Twitter of me sending one of these flying. This one doesn't want to fly quite too well. They don't fly too well. The ones I printed earlier do. Anyways, pull copter. <laughs> The one I printed earlier flies great. 
This one I printed a little too high. Anyways, anyways, <laughs> go print one of these off. It's a fun little toy. If you're built of Oron, you have M2 self tappers. Go make one. It's summer out. Go print one off. Go outside in your backyard and send it flying. It's nice out. So, what's in the box? I'm not quite sure. It's a JG Maker. We are going to build it. We're going to print with it. Now, there's a few different models of JG Maker. Um, I'm hoping it's the Artist D. However, I went back and checked my emails. It's not an Artist D. I wish. Um, so we might be a little disappointed, but you won't be disappointed with the pull copter from Thanks. So make sure you check them out in the link in the description below. They are sponsoring the show tonight. So go download this thing, print it off, have some fun, give it a like, because Thanks is awesome. They help produce the content I create and they help support the things I do. So I have opened it up simply for the fact to figure out to ensure that I wasn't opening something on stream that wasn't a 3D printer, because you actually never know. Zoom out. So all I know is it's a JG Aurora, although I think they're now called JG Maker. So I'm not sure which model this is. Um, So let's find out. JG Wentworth, it's my money and I need it now. So, um, it is a, oh God, blue tape. We're going to have a fun one tonight, boys. Blue tape. Blue tape. Oh, this is going to be a fun one. Um, documentation. And by the way, we will be going through this and I'm going to be pointing out everything that's wrong with it. We're going to open it up before we even print it. I'm going to check under the hood. So this is going to be kind of like, uh, for those that like, um, that are subscribed to, uh, uncle Bumblefuck, uh, AVE, um, he has a series called Bolter board of lane tool reviews where he like rips apart the tool. Um, we're going to do something like that. I think, cause, uh, yeah, and if things start getting a little fun, I do have a bottle of Wisers. So, unboxing 2D printers. Honestly, 3D printers work better than 2D printers. I've never had problems with 3D printers. 2D printers are an absolute pain. So, in terms of my instructions, it is uh, printer assembling, take out machine parts in the package, printer base, frame, filament holder, toolbox, let printer base pass through frame, beware, that's two separate words, beware, uh, of the screen should be the same direction as the frame as shown as pick aim the point a to point to B point fix between the slot then use large screw and shim to install that is my instructions to build this thing um, on the other side of the frame should install filament holder using small screw then connect wires that is it that's my whole instructions okay um, this is too big for my thing, so I'm going to put it on the ground and pull parts out. And we're going to, yeah, see what we got here. Ugh. So it's, um, it's not a V-wheel. This is not a V-wheel setup. At least the, uh, the bed is not a V-wheel. It's got some good weight to it. It, it does, it's got weight. So how big of a bed do we even have here? Because again, um, I'm not 100% sure what printer this is. Um, so there's the front. So what do we have here? Uh, a magic? No, it's got a knob. No, this mine doesn't have a knob. It's a okay. So it looks like an A5S. We have a JG Maker A5S. I will put that link in the description. Um, yeah, 
I don't think it's the artist. Oh, that would have been cool. If it was the artist, that would have been cool because uh, I don't have an IDEX machine. But uh, unfortunately, I don't think I have the YouTube cred to pull in uh, um, an IDEX machine. So we'll see. Oh, and I did miss, sorry, I, I Kilo Cubit, I completely missed. I'm sorry about that. But thank you. Uh, $50. Awesome. You are awesome. Uh, for all the ethanol you will need after last week. Last week was fine. Audio's fine. How's audio, guys? Is is audio good? Audio should be good. Soundmind TV. I have two of these A5Ss. Okay, so it it is a printer. Um, let me get the music going. Nobody's I'm not getting F's in chat, so audio should be good. I, I got the, uh, I'm using the road. I got the road hooked up. I think I figured out the road and uh, I do have a lapel mic. So I think we're okay. So, uh, is this a used unit? I don't know. Cause I know, uh, what's it? Uh, Chris's basement got a used one, I think, but I don't know. This is a little scuffed. The fact that it's got blue tape, but it could just have blue tape. Um. What's under the hood here? So this is all metal. Uh, already a build video or something like that about the mini afterburner for the Voron Zero. So, um, yes, I got to mention that for the Voron Zero. Um, this week is going to be a crazy busy week. So I'm going to go run through the schedule for this week right now. Um, I have this week off work, okay? Yes, the, the YouTube is not my job. I have a job job. Um, but I don't have a job job this week because I'm on vacation. So, um, uh, if things go well, I have today's stream. And there should be one, up to three streams in the next week. Okay, that's just uh, a screen. There's just a screen in there. I want to take a look inside here, but there's a lot to take a part on this. So I'm going to skip that for now. Um, I can see JG Aurora on the board, but I can't see what kind of controller it is. So there might be up to potentially three streams this week. Uh, the plan is my V 0.1 kit is on the way. It's uh, it should be according to UPS here Monday when it shows up. I will be doing an unboxing overview of the kit stream, either Monday or Tuesday, whenever it shows up. And then I'm also gonna be doing a, along with opening up the kit, going through everything, showing everything off and talking about the kit itself, I will be doing a prep stream because I'm going to be prepping some components of it because on Friday, this Friday coming up, I'm going to wake up at whatever time I wake up and I think about 10 a.m. Eastern, I am going to go live and I'm going to stream all day because I'm going to try and build a V0.1 as much as I can in a day. It is an LDO kit. How the heck am I supposed to get this out? Yes, it is an LDO kit. So I will be doing a full or I don't, I'm not, it's not going to be a 24 hour stream. How the heck do I get this out? I got a piece of foam jammed under the bed here. Um, so I don't know. I, I'm going to start streaming at 10 AM and we're just going to keep going and build and build and see how far we can get. So. When the kit shows up, there will be a prep stream. I'm going to prep certain components. I will be getting like heat set inserts installed. Um, I may even put like rails on the extrusions. I'm going to try and knock off all the busy work, uh, install the firmware uh, before the stream. So that way I could do a full build stream. That's not bad. Um, in a day. So Friday, 10 a.m. Eastern, if the kit shows up, the kit has to show up. If the kit doesn't show up, um, obviously I'm not going to be streaming, but 
it should be here Monday. I got a carborundum bed. Why do I have tape on this then? Oh, that's annoying. So, yep, that will be going on Friday. And then on top of that, um, one day between now and the Friday, I will be doing a member stream on, uh, it'll be early afternoon my time. So like noon, 1 a.m. or 1 p.m., something like that. And uh, that will be open to anyone who's a Patreon member or a member of the channel, a YouTube member. Um, I'm not gonna do anything that I would deem my normal content. So it's not gonna be an instructional or anything. Um, what we may do is I, I gotta redo the uh, input shaper tune and pressure advance on Toasty, but it's gonna be like an AMA slash QA slash whatever happens happens for like an hour or two stream. So a kit, I have nothing against kits. The problem is there's no kits that I would put my name on because I don't have, or the Voron team doesn't have control of any of these kits. Wow, this is a pain. I'm gonna skip peeling all this tape off for now. Um, the Voron team has no control over the kits, right? We have no input on them. We, you know, if a vendor starts selling really crappy stuff, we can't do anything about it. So we won't put our name on a kit. But if somebody comes out with a kit for a good price, it's a kit for a good price. And it has all the stuff. So the Formbot kit, good price. Parts are a little eh, they're getting better. But for a lot of people, it's actually um, almost like several hundred dollars cheaper than they can buy in country. And once you factor in shipping and everything, wow, this is a big printer. Uh, once you factor in shipping and everything, um, it, it's actually kind of worth it. What's in the box? What's in the box? We have whatever this is, power cord, a sand disk memory card with a crappy adapter, a really crappy adapter. And it's already opened, so I don't even know what's on here. Um, hot end? Is this a spare hot end? Wow, that's a, I don't even know what kind of hot end this is. Nozzle thread tube heater block. Wow, okay, that's an old hot end. Cable, yay, USB cable. Extra gubbins. Yeah. Um, oh, glass bead thermistor. Wow, glass bead thermistor. Okay, this is an older printer, that's for sure. Warranty card. Yeah, we're not gonna need most of that, I don't think. Wow. Yeah, PTFE lined. This is an old, oh God. Oh God. Oh God, please tell me. This might be an interesting, uh, 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 A5S. Okay, so it's 300 by 300 by 300. So that's actually a pretty big printer. Um, heated bed, okay. Nozzle temp. Okay, guys, so just so you guys know, the nozzle temperature is anywhere from 10 to 150 millimeters a second. Okay, so if you wanna know how hot this can print, it could print at 150 millimeters a second. That's what temperatures it can do. Yeah. So it can, yeah. Um, control panel, so it's controlled by an eight, uh, 2.8 inch touchscreen. Uh, software is Cura. Yeah, we're gonna use, um, uh, I'm gonna throw a, uh, uh, my, a PIF profile at it because why not? Uh, yeah, and, it, and it, it can run Windows 7. So we're good there, guys. It can run Windows 7. I think I still have a burned copy of it somewhere. You know what I'm not seeing though? Silent steppers. This thing is going to be playing the song of its people. Ooh. That's actually kind of cool. So it's not V-Wheel. It is not V-Wheel. Um, it is uh, dual lead screw. So we got dual lead screws. Um, we have 
linear rails. That ain't bad. Like in terms of the frame, like the frame ain't bad. Okay, good. The hot end's installed. So it comes with a spare hot end. That's good, I guess. A uh, single 30-30 uh, part fan, cooling fan. Uh, the, the tool head itself is aluminum. Put clipper, oh yeah, this will put, I'm not gonna install it today, but um, this probably will get clipperized at some point because that's how I roll. Wow, they really jammed a lot of foam in here. Bring it down, nope, okay. Well, hopefully I can bring it down later. Um, So, cardboard. Oh, cardboard. Cardboard. Yay, cardboard. Uh, so yeah, that is that end stop. Uh, we got cable sleeving. PTFE goes through this, along with all the power cables and everything. You know what? It's actually don't seem too bad. It's a bag of screws. I'm gonna need screws. This actually doesn't seem too bad, honestly. Um, I'm not a huge fan of sheet metal frames, simply for the fact that they're, they are proprietary. Like my Monoprice Select Mini, for those that don't know, my very first printer was a Monoprice Select Mini. Um, the problem with a sheet metal frame is you are very limited if you want to start customizing stuff. It's not like, uh, so that just kind of drops on there, I guess. Um, you you are very limited when it comes to, oh, hey, I want to modify it. Well, it's a sheet metal frame. I can't just, you know, slap an external extruder on here, right? It's not like uh, V-slot. For a V-slot, you can mount anything anywhere. This, you get what you get. Uh, Monoprice Select Mini. Honestly, I wish I tried to resurrect it. My Monoprice Select Mini died on me, unfortunately. Um, one of the... Y bearing seized up and it uh, destroyed itself. And I tried to like swap out the uh, the leads or the linear bearing and it was seized in the housing and the rods were all destroyed. And I, I, I just kind of kiboshed it at that point. So according to the one, one line of instructions, let the printer base pass through the frame. Beware of the screen should be the same direction as frame as shown in pick. Aim the A point to B point. Uh, fix between the slot, then use large screw with shim to install it. I guess M3 is a large screw? Or is that from underneath? Oh, from underneath, okay. I should have gone the other way. Let me go the other way. It does look like an i3. It's big. Like, I personally, I'm not a huge fan of bed, big bed flingers. I think like the size of the switch wire, 250 millimeters is about personally as big as I would go with a bed flinger because I don't like a lot of moving mass. I, I like my, my lower moving mass. But sometimes it is what it is. It's like people who buy CR10s. I would never have a CR10. I can't stand that size. That is way too big of a bed flinger. Does it balance? Hey, it balances. So this was pre-assembled. I've got wear marks on the uh, the sheet steel where like the 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 uh, Or it's I don't know. It's not paint. It's like the uh, anodizing or whatever is worn off. So this has been assembled before. Now I don't know if it's factory refurb or if it's just hey, uh, this is a demo unit and there's a YouTuber. We're gonna send them like an old demo unit because why not? Yolo. But hey, I got a printer. Ah. Of course, he uses like M4s. 
Hopefully not QC return. Honestly, nothing wrong with a QC return if they fix it. I buy a lot of Amazon warehouse deals simply for the fact that, uh, you're saving quite a bit, usually on just an open box. So, so far we've done four screws. Um, some little ones here. I3 Mega was a pretty good printer. Yeah, everyone seems to be moving into the uh, the V-wheel aluminum extrusion though for printers. Like, it's just so much easier to do your whole uh, supply chain based around that because these are, you know, this is all sheet metal, right? So you need custom dies. Um, everything is custom. Like you can't swap um, components. Where if you look at like an Ender, all the different versions of the Ender. It's still an ender. They're just swapping, you know, components around, right? So, you know, it's it's 2020. It's 4040. There, my Ender 3 V2 still has cuts in the extrusions from the original Ender, like original Ender from like five years ago or whenever the original Ender 3 came out. Oh, I should have had washers in the bottom. Oh well. And by the way, this don't use this video as like assembly guide or anything. This is just you know, us having fun with a printer off the shelf. Okay. Um, plug in stuff, I guess. That is what it is. Really, not a lot of clearance under the bed there. Uh, ooh. Um, Mike, uh, 10 euro. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Uh, looking to get my first 3D printer. Uh, would a Voron switch blade, it's switch wire, not switch blade, uh, be a good one to start, or should I get an Ender 3 and learn the ropes? Building a machine seems a little a good learning experience. The switch wire which is that guy right there is the simplest Voron to build and legit. It is not complicated. Um, it's got a very good set of instructions with it. The build itself, there's really nothing funky with it. Uh, price wise, it will run you about roughly what it costs to buy a Prusa, maybe a little bit less. And we're talking a kit, not a, not a fully assembled Prusa. So about what you would spend on a Prusa kit, is about how much a switch wire would cost you. Okay, so um, the cables plug into the side. I've got styrofoam on my lead screws. Um, A5S, upgraded, more stable. That's hot. It's upgraded, it's more stable. I, I don't know what more stable means. Were the previous versions not stable? I don't know. Oh, I could do double peel. Look at that one. That one was bad. Ooh. Honestly, um, black, shiny, Plastic. Stop doing this, guys. It's just a fingerprint magnet. Stop doing it. Stop it. Stop it now. Uh, I think I can give it power now. According to my instructions, on the other side of the frame should be filament holder. Oh, filament holder. This is it in the box. So I got my filament holder. It goes here. Right there. Yeah, okay, filament holder goes there. Uh, when multi-material would it be available to print for Voron? Um, my, there is a tool head for the afterburner. 
that has a built-in Y splitter that you can use. My Switchwire actually uses that. It's in the Switchwire GitHub, I believe. Um, and you can use like a, a pallet, but in terms of like um, an MMU, look up the Enraged Rabbit Feeder, I think it's called. Um, Enraged Rabbit Feeder? Yeah. That is a, basically, it's, that's a, uh, a Prusa MMU type uh, multi-material setup that you can build. It uses basically stacked together Voron M4 extruders um, as its uh, base. And uh, there's that. And then there are a few pe mods that people are working on for tool changers, but there's nothing official because multi-material is not something the Voron design team is super interested in. Um, Uh, in my opinion, yes. So don't buy a printer intending to convert it to a switch wire. The switch wire is a standalone design. Yes, it uses components, um, off the shelf components that are from a Prusa R3, like the bed. Well, pretty much just the bed. It is a full design on its own. It's not a mod. It is, you build it on itself. Now, some people have converted stuff like Ender 3s to it. Pretty much any, the, de the design can be easily adapted to use if you already have like an old Ender 3 or CR10 or any other extrusion based printer, you can use a lot of the components in it. But I wouldn't go and buy a printer specifically to convert it. Enraged Rabbit Carrot Feeder. There you go. So should I plug the sketchy um, SD card into my computer? Should I plug the sketchy SD card into my computer? Or should we just load up and create and print something using like a stock profile? Voltage switch. Voltage switch, yes, yes. Voltage switch. Where is the voltage switch? Okay, power supply is underneath. How do I get at the power supply? Power input, 110 volt. It's already set for 110, I think. Find out in a minute. Blade Scraper, thank you for coming a member. Okay, well, we'll give it power and see what happens. <laughs> There's a sticker on the back that fell off that said it is set for 110 volts. And uh, me living in um, north of Freedom Land, I am in 110 land, so we should be good. So let me get my extension cord over here. Um, it is powered off. It is plugged in. I'm hearing fans. I got something on the screen. It is on. It is on. Might be some interesting tentacle porn on the SD card. That is a possibility. Oh, do I have a guest? I have a guest. Oh, hey, Calvin. Hey, what's this? A 3D printer here. Push this button. Push the purple button. Oh, okay. Can you push the purple button? Oh. It's moving. It's moving. That is catching on there and that is really annoying. There we go. Yeah, don't touch, don't touch. Is that cool? Watch, you're gonna go click. Click.
Is that cool? Okay. You say hi. Hi. Say hi. Look at the screen. Hi. Is it bedtime? No, it is bedtime. It's bedtime. Bedtime. Okay. No, no, don't play with the mic. Say bye bye. Say good night. Good night. You gonna say good night? Okay. Here, yeah, go to mama. Good night. Good night. Uh, in a minute. Okay. I uh, still foam on the Z. No, we got the foam out. I'm really not liking the way the cabling is. Um, that just kind of hangs out in the open there. Yeah, we got a 3030 for hot end fan and another 3030 blower. So. Ooh. Did you hear that? Okay. Yes, uh, and he also got the fact that he has hair from his mom. Poor guy might be cursed with my hairline, unfortunately. Okay, um, yeah, let's see what's on the, uh, something is scratching. Yeah, it's, well, it's, that's another problem with these got like this bracket here but the bracket itself is uh, just a cover so it, it's all uh, linear rail so it's all LM8 you use so there's that sounds weird it's got a four nine eight eights it, it's yeah so apparently it has an auto level routine. So let's power it off and get this blue tape off. Let's get this blue tape off. This, is, this printer does not have ABL. It does not have a, a sensor or a probe of any kind. Um, it has a routine where you can push a button and it will move to all four corners and you can manually adjust the level. Ah. Shall I go? Oh, yes. Okay, Koda. Oh, here. Here, here, here. Are you guys ready? I, I've, I've come prepared. <laughs> Oh, careful. Okay. I've come prepared. I have doggo treats. Sit. If I can get at the doggo treats. I just dropped the knife on the ground. Sit. Sit. Shake paw. Oh, he's a good boy. Speak. 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 Oh, okay. Here you go. These actually smell good. Blueberry and peanut butter. Wheat, corn, and soy free. What, you're not, are you going to eat it? Eat it. Seriously? Eat it. You're just drooling all over my floor. He's just sitting there, like, smelling it and drooling all over the floor.
clean up. I got clump crumbs. Now I got a vacuum. Yeah, he's got floppy ears. His name's Coda. It's actually my wife's dog. It's, you were here before me. You're a good boy. He's a good boy. And there is dog drool all over the floor. Okay. You gonna go see mama? He is a good boy. He's a very good boy. So this has a carborundum bed, um, which is relatively common with a lot of printers. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of carborundum beds. Um, I, I'm firmly on the PEI flex plate train. Um, I am not a huge fan of these carborundum glass beds. They're good for low cost printers that have thin beds that have a tendency to warp and you need to manually level because it gives you a, uh, a more rigid surface to work with. Um, but personally, I am, I am all aboard. I'm all about that flexible PI sheets. Dropping my clips. Or am I wearing shoes? I am wearing my sandals inside. Normally I wear slippers because um, there's printer room floor and there's stuff on the floor. And you don't know pain until you step into it on top of a retraction uh, test print and it pierces your foot because I've done that. So in your printer room, you should at least wear something on your feet. Oh, David's here. Hi, David. Everyone say hi, David. You know the drill. And also, if you have not wished David a happy birthday, it was his birthday yesterday. So make sure everyone wishes David a happy birthday if you do not wish him a happy birthday yesterday. If you only print PLA. Oh, yeah, I'm not going to print ABS on. I might print ABS on here. Okay, uh, let's turn it back on. Oh, that fan is a screamer. Yeah, that fan is loud. The joys of noise canceling headphones. Okay, so uh, level your beds hot. So heat. Um, I set fan. I I don't think I can set my hot end. I have heat. I don't have the option to Okay, whatever. I'll just heat close and live adjust. Live adjust. Level. Yep, so that's exactly what it is. So when it comes to leveling. Focus. You can home. Home all. Oh, wow. That sounds like garbage. That first uh, move there. Wow, that is way off. Wow. Okay, watch, watch this. Back, move. Okay, watch, th watch this lead screw. Watch this lead screw when I home. See if it does it again. Home, home, all. Oh.
<laughs> oh, oh, ho, oh, oh, ho, oh. What is up with you? What is up with you? That is not right. Why are you catching? What are you catching on? Are you racked? Is that it? Oh, that's why. You are way racked. Ah, uh, okay. I need gloves. It's got some, like, really heavy duty packing grease on these lead screws. No, the gantry is hardcore racked. Which would make sense. So what that means is the, uh, the gantry is like this, and the lead screws are vertical, but they're like... That, that ain't good. Out? What is it bombed out on? What? Oh, it's just really crappy. <laughs> I can't go down that high. Okay, let's try this again. Yeah, so whenever you have like a, ra a rack gantry, this isn't running clipper, it doesn't have a bed probe, so I can't do the, uh... That is horrible. It's homing, but it's... Okay, let's level this. So how it levels is you can push a button and it'll move to certain points and it'll... So it homes. The problem is it, I'm losing steps like a madman. So, so far, uh, my initial impressions of this printer are that it is a printer and uh, it may or may not print. Um, we shall find out in a minute because uh, it is a it is a 3D printer. It has a part that moves. It has a part that gets hot. Um, it makes noise. 
It is making noise. Um, we're losing steps on Zed. I, we're losing something. Somebody made the suggestion that um, to make this more interesting, I take a shot every time we get to something that's a little um, funky. I, I was at first, I was like, oh yeah, that'll be fun. I, I'm kind of glad I didn't decide to go with that because I would probably be inebriated by now. Yeah, reach through all the wires to play with the adjustment knob. Blaze Creeper, $10. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Seriously, keep up the good work. Even though I'm done with my V2 and I'm a couple thousand hours on it now, I still love watching your streams and video. That's why I do them. I do a stream every Saturday, so yeah, I do a lot of builds. But uh I do them because they're fun. I like I have fun doing the streams. The builds give me easy content. But I do them because I enjoy the actual stream portion the most. Ooh. The problem is, I don't know if that's right because it losing steps. Home all. Like, I'm losing steps on Zed. How am I losing steps on Zed? Back, set. Can I change anything? Motors off, fan, icon, front. Set what? Level, extrude, print, home. Level fifth. Move. Set up. Okay. Um. Should we just YOLO it up the current eight? I'd have to open it up. This is a, uh, I can see the controller board. Yeah, I'd have to open the printer up to get at it. Unfortunately. So uh, let's see what's on the demo SD card. Make sure both motors, they're spinning. Both motors are spinning. I'd have to take the whole thing apart. Let's see what's on here. Let's just, you know, see what's on the SD card. See what we even have. We are going to use the demo filament. It is eSun. It is a quarter pound spool. Quarter kilogram spool, sorry. So this one shouldn't have the same issue we ran into with the... Uh, for those that remember the uh, Ender 3 spool, check the couplers. Yeah, I'll, I'll check the couplers in a second. Okay, so first order of business, the extruder is the generic. It does have a, uh, a micro switch. It does have a filament runout sensor, which is nothing but a, a ball bearing pushing against a micro switch. And the extruder itself is the extremely basic one that you all know and love of simply a tooth gear pushing against the bearing. The bearing is curved at least, but it is the bone stock cheapo Filippo special of hot ends. Personally, I detest them. We are, it is current year, put better extruders on your printers, people. These are garbage. Um, print, so system, back, system volume, nope, back, back,
Okay, I'm gonna plug this into my computer. See what we got. Any suggestion for filament runout on 2.4? There's a few. Um, you can really mount it anywhere. I wouldn't recommend mounting it in the tool head, simply for the fact with Clipper, because everything is batched commands, you do want a little bit of a, um, a gap from where the, like you need time for it to sense it ran out and then stop the print. I don't think it has a demo print. Nope. It does have instructions though. So we've got this. This. Uh, that. Oh, there's a user manual. Yeah, oh hey, we have a user manual, guys. Cool. Okay, let's slice something. Let's slice something. Super slicer file. Uh, add root printer. Add physical printer. This is JG. JG. Uh, what is it? A5S? Type. Oh, I rocked. Okay, I don't know. Wait, how do we do this? How do we do this? Okay, so it's a JG Aurora, which I don't think... Oh, hey, look, there's, uh, in Super Slicer, there's Voron profiles. So, uh, there you go. So there's no JG Aurora, so we're just gonna call it a... a Prusa. We're just gonna call it a Prusa Mark III and adjust the, uh, the XY. Prusa Mark III, next. Okay. Wait, oh, where is it? Where is it? How do I do this? Okay, I think that's all right. Prusa. Next. Any cubic mega X, okay. to start new profiles though in Super Slicer. Because that is something I haven't done. So I've only imported like, um, where is the setting to bring it in? Configuration Windsor, yeah. So Prusa, so Anycubic. So we want to do an Anycubic, i3 mega. Okay, next. No, I don't want to go that, so finish. Any of those. 
Uh, please, the song name right now. Oh, the song is... Um, no One's Hero by Harris Heller. Okay, but then where is my profiles? I only got my my imported profiles. Your settings. Oh, there we go. Okay, I need Cubic i3 Mega. Okay, so there's Prusa. Okay, so there's Prusa. Okay, so max print height is 320, and we got 305. So let's go 300 by 300. Okay. Extruder, it's running Marlin, 0.4 millimeters. Uh, retraction, we're gonna go with like a, I don't know, a three millimeter retraction. There we go. Uh, no Z-Hop, because why not? Custom G-Code, oh my God, look at all that, look at all that. G28. And G-Code. Um, we're not even gonna oh, okay actually g1 x um uh, 150 y uh 300 there we go there we go move to the back g28 um so filament there we go okay so filament settings we're going with generic pla 215 200 blah, 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 blah. cooling fan max sure whatever printer there we go okay Point two quality speed draft. And we'll go with that. Perimeters two, three, four. Infill. Yeah, sure, whatever. Okay, let's find something to print. If it'll even make it to the end of the G-code. You know what? This is a big printer. We're gonna need a big print. There we go. We are gonna be printing a big chungus. Why is there a hole under his body? Let me find the model without the, uh, the hole. because I want to try infill. I want it to actually like spend time doing its print. There we go. We'll go with this one. There we go. Big chungus. Slice now. You want you want to know what a, a fun fact about uh, the good old Big Chungus uh, Bugs Bunny? If I'm not mistaken, the Big Chungus Bugs Bunny episode was either 1941 or 1943. That means Stalin could have seen Big Chungus. It's a possibility. USB drive, Big Chungus. It's a possibility. You don't know. Churchill could have seen Big Chungus. Okay, so let's home this, heat up our nozzle, get some filament going. God, that sounds horrible. Okay. 
move. Back, extrude. So let's heat it up. Heat. Heat. Okay, it's heating up. It's heating up. Did it come with enough filament? I've got a spool of, I got a quarter kilogram spool. Oh, here's an idea. Okay, David, if you're in chat here, uh, because he does, you know, printed solid has Jesse PLA. Um, yes, we all know filament comes in these spools, right? One kilogram spools. Um, and you can buy a variety pack. There needs to be variety packs that are like third kilogram spools or even half kilogram spools where you can buy like a pack of like eight colors at once or 10 colors at once. Because somebody who's trying to like stock up on colors, it's annoying to have to buy one kilogram spools of everything and then you don't have the option of buying. So like have packs of like five, 10 spools, but different colors in like third sizes or something. Cause you don't always need, you know, I don't need a kilogram of yellow, but it'd be nice to have some yellow. So it'd be nice to have multi-packs of filament. I don't know. I think that should be more of a thing. So coils. Yeah. Coils is, is filament without the, the spool though. Like I'm, I'm talking like third kilogram spools or half kilogram spools of all the fancy colors that you don't really need a whole spool of. Like I don't print a lot of yellow. Half kilograms a good size. Like honestly, most people aren't printing massive things. Like, you know, I just did this in some Sparta 3d, uh, copper, uh, copper fill PLA. And this is like nothing. It's like what? 20 grams. If that, Oh, I'm getting filament. Okay. So extrude. Oh, that's how I changed the bed. Okay. So that is that. So let's turn the bed up. Key. Let's turn the bed up. Okay. Back. Extrude. Out. Oh, in. Oh, we are, we are extruding. Okay. Slow and normal. Hey, we got plastic. Printer printing cam is failing. So we do have that. Cool. Um, print. Back. Heat. So the bed's at 40. We're going to let the bed heat up for a minute. It is heating up and then we're good at printing and uh, we'll see what happens. Coils are good if you print a big volume. Um, like I, I know a lot of the Voron guys who do printed forward use coils because they're buying 10, they're buying cases of filament at a time. So coils make sense there. So carbol spools. Yeah, I have a spool of the uh, Polymaker, what is it? The, the Polyterra PLA, and that's a cardboard spool. The problem is I am, like paper dust on it. Didn't come with a sock. No, it did not. How do you pronounce the name? It's a JG Aurora. JG Aurora. Uh, A5S upgraded, more stable, more lead screw wobble edition. All the lead screw wobble edition. Waiting for the bed to heat up. I hate how you can't see oh, no, heat. Back heat. Ah, uh, it's a touch screen that you can't hold it down. You have to keep tapping it. Heat. Okay, back print. Big chungus, yes. There we go. So 
This is what our little update screen looks like when it is running. Focus, there you go. Seriously, focus, focus. You were focused a minute ago. Anyways, that's, that's our update screen. Jag, it's the Jag. Yeah, go on Jeremy Clarkson, it's the Jag. At least it's not an Ender 3 clone. What's in the, the V226? Um, uh, stuff, it's storage right now. So we're waiting on the bed to heat up. Oh, oh, it's doing stuff, guys. It just dragged across the whole thing. Oh, that's crunching. Option. Stop. Yes. Uh. Oh, ho, ho. that was painful. That was painful. Uh, print, try again. That was really painful. Oh well, try again. It's the advantage when you don't really care about it. If something breaks, oh well. It does etching as well. <laughs> there you go. See? Time to take over an old Zellers and turn it into a studio. <laughs> the cell. Uh, they're all the old Zellers in my town is now a uh, a call center. Check front left clip. Oh. No, we're still engraving. There we go. Whoever pointed out that clip, good idea. There we go. Live adjust C. Live adjust C, guys. That's what Bruce always says, right? Live adjust C. It'll work itself out. Exactly. Who cares? Like, honestly, the first layer, you don't look at the bottom of your print. There we go. I fixed it. Okay, you guys don't care about first layers going down. So, I fixed it. One of the screws was crooked. So, it was actually catching on it. So, it wasn't working right. But, oh, geez, where'd it go? There we go. I fixed the little pole copter. So honestly, I printed off like a ton of these and uh, like all it is is just a little ring. Put that through, put that on top. There you go. Woo. So I printed like a whole bunch of these uh, copters themselves, because they're, they're only one one layer thick, right? One wall thick. So I printed a whole bunch of them, and they're upstairs. My kid chases around. I I didn't uh, in, I didn't drag the nozzle. I tested out its experimental engraving feature. As uh, who, who somebody pointed that out. So there you go. If you want to print a pull copter, go on. Uh, Go check it out on Thangs. I got a link in the description. It's by the same guy who did the, uh... Who 
We did the uh, fighter jet that we printed last week, the folding fighter jet. Can't wait for the V0.1. Yes, they are on thanks. Yes, it's on thanks. Go in the description below. It, it's a link to all his stuff, and one of them is the pole copter. play you the song of my people. All the rattling of the extrusion. So... So it looks like their idler is an F625 uh, bearing stack. Just like we use in the V2s. So, what do you think of the Hemera now or the Triangle App one? Um, I haven't got the Hemera online yet. I do have it installed. Build quality is really good. I haven't used the TL uh, Hemera. Um, how fast are we even printing here? But um, honestly, I think uh, originally I kind of pooped on the Hemera a bit. Um, but actually, now that I have one on hand, my my especially now that I've been working with direct feed extruders for a while now. Um, my opinion on them has improved, especially build quality, and they fixed the issues that it was having. So, yeah, so far it seems okay. Uh, how fast are we going here? Infill, 200 millimeters a second. Ooh. I also have noise canceling on right now. I just turned it off. I'm also wearing noise canceling headphones, so I can't even hear this. Ooh. Yeah, so that's another problem with these, um, stamped steel frame printers is they rattle. I can hear it like rattling constantly. It's got a bad bearing somewhere. And you can hear it rattle. Because this cover plate right here, this is just a cover plate. This is just a cover plate. It's got two LM8 um, or 8 millimeter rods behind it. That's what your X axis is. So honestly, you should probably even take this off. It does sound horrible. Here, let me turn. You guys want me to turn the music up a little bit? <laughs> Sounds a bit bad. Oh, yeah. This thing's big. Like, just look at this compared to Toasty. Now, granted, this is 300 by 300, but Toasty's 250. Tallboy is 330. Wow. You want to hear the printer song? Let me play the song of my people. This thing is 300. Uh, this is also an older printer. I think this printer is actually from like 2018. So, um, for those that don't know, the reason I have it is several months back, a bunch of companies, uh, JG Maker, uh, Mingda, um, I'm trying to remember, I, I, a bunch of companies contacted me saying, oh, hey, we want to send you printers, will you review them? And I'm like, if you send me a printer, I have no problem. You got, if any company wants to send me anything ever, I'm open to it. I will use it on stream because I stream weekly and content is content. However, if it's a bog standard i3 style printer, if it's a bed flinger that's nothing special, I'm not going to review it. There's no point in doing a review on it, especially this one because this printer came out in like 2018. Okay. It, it doesn't even have silent steppers. So I'm not doing a review on it, but we'll get it up on stream. We'll play around with it. Honestly, the part I like the most of this is the, uh, it's 
that the Z-axis making that noise? The part that I like about it the most is the base. The gantry is, uh, the base is actually really solid. You must have got the optional extra gravel filled bearings. Oh yeah. This is a big printer. By the way, it's going right back in the box after this. I don't have room for this. This is printer number nine, I think. So yeah, this is going right back in the box. We were taking about a project to try and get a printer up to Voron print quality. What well, could you try with that one? Well, the first thing would be putting Clipper on it. Putting Clipper and getting this controller. Honestly, at this point, I, I still have my stock Creality um, controller board. I could throw that in here if it's 20. I don't even know if this is 24 or 12 volt. Is it 12 volt or 24 volt? Um, power supply 300 watt. AC 120. It doesn't say. Um, I don't even know if it's 24 volt. I do have a 24 volt power supply I could throw in it, but I am I could throw this in there, put clipper on it. Wait, this already has clipper installed and uh, go that way. It's 12 volt. Yeah, it's probably 12 volt. I mean, that controller board still will run at 12, 12 volt. Because honestly, if you look at, okay, see that? The X carriage is aluminum, right? So all I would do, honestly, is this goes bye-bye. That extruder, that's junk. That goes bye-bye. Um, this cover plate comes off. Mount an inductive probe to this side of the carriage. Bed uh, flex plate, go with an uh, a spring steel flex plate and install clipper. So with that, you have clipper. You can do the gantry tilt to, to de-rack this mess. You got your flex plate, uh, spring steel. You got a better extruder. Um, heck, you could throw an orbiter on this. The problem is you have to be careful at max Z because it's directly below this. So you wouldn't be able to use the full 320. You would have to limit it, but throw a uh, orbiter on top. Bing bada boom, Bob's your uncle. That's what I would do. And then it would just be tuning. Because honestly, I am firmly on the direct feed train right now. Like, I don't think I'll be doing Bowden printers, like building Bowden printers, without a good reason for a while. I am, I am firmly on direct feed now. Has anyone tried CF, uh, PETG? A few have. The only problem is is C, uh, PETG itself has creep issues, especially in a, a heated chamber. Uh, rat rig or Voron, what do you prefer? Well, I don't have a rat rig. I have five Vorons. I'm building my sixth Voron and I'm on the Voron design team. Um, so I prefer hypercubes. Never have, never will with Bowden. My switch wire is Bowden. My switch wire will stay Bowden because it's a dual feed setup, right? I got, I got, oh, it's a Y splitter. Um, but the days of having to light near hot end, I think the tool head, because you want to print fast or are nearing its end because printers are built better than they used to be. They're more rigid and firmwares have evolved to compensate for a lot of the issues. We have pressure advanced tuning. We have, well, really good pressure advanced tuning. We have input shaper tuning. So printers are built better than they used to be. They can take more weight on the tool heads without flexing. They're not acrylic A net 8.8s anymore. And we have firmware that can compensate for it, 
Remember, like if you ever seen a CNC machine with a 15,000 pound gantry moving around at, you know, a meter a second, and then you look at a 3D printer that can't do, you know, 15 millimeters a second without ringing. There's a big difference. And yeah, the, the hardware is there. You can put, you know, you don't need to chase grams on your tool head on most new printers, and especially with custom printers. You can design around it. I will say it's printing. The infill's looking really good. Like, Like that infill's looking real clean. It, this thing's a loud, screamy mess, but it's doing okay. I'm trying to, let me see if I can get better light here. Like, honestly, this isn't bad. Is, is my part fan going? Yeah, my part fan's going. It's got a little duct on the back. A four nine eight eights will print decent. Honestly, all steppers with a good firmware will print fine. You you don't really get print quality differences off Clipper with A four nine eight eights versus twenty two oh nines. It's the difference is your ears and the ability to live adjust your uh, your uh, currents. PTG2. I, I know a few people because I, I did my um, how to print ABS series and I had people message me about how they killed their, uh, how they melted their Prusas in closing them. Because if you enclose it too well, you'll run into issues. It's a full metal hot end. This isn't a full metal hot end. Basically, think of it this way. Um, Build your printer out of one step up for what you plan on printing. So in an enclosed printer, if you or a printer, if you only ever plan on printing PLA, PETG is probably fine. If you plan on printing PETG, print it out of ABS. It's like when you're cutting metal, you need to use something at least similar or harder. Right? You're, you're not cutting, you're not cutting steel with brass. You're cutting brass with steel. Like even my mono price, like mini, I printed a uh, an extruder mount for it in PLA, and that melted eventually. What's the uh, easiest way to flatten the metal dowels for the Z gears? Uh, you uh, put a flat on them. You mean? Um, if you have a grinder of some sort, that is the easiest way. Or if you have a really good file, but um, yeah, ABS on ABS is fine. ABS on ABS is fine is because your chamber temperatures don't really get near the glass transition temp of uh, ABS. Problem is with PETG. Yes, it, it's good to like 70 degrees Celsius. The problem is as it gets close to that, it gets weaker. It's not like um, it's not like a sharp graph where it's like good, 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 fail. It's like uh, fail. So it'll start to soften and you'll get creep issues. That's the big issue. Prusa pin to melt. Tungsten carbide printer parts incoming. Uh, the problem with resin is they get brittle. I've seen a lot of people try resin parts on uh, enclosed printers on Vorons and fail. Um, I wa seen one guy, his tool head, the part where the belt attaches to it on the tool head, on the afterburner tool head, that whole part just ripped right out eventually. Like it just pulled a chunk out of it out. How about nylon? Uh, Toasty Boy is CF nylon. And I did have some creep issues right off the bat with it. But I went through and retightened all the screws and things seem to be holding okay. I know uh, Stefan, uh, CNC Kitchen, he had issues with his CF nylon and creep issues. So it's very hit and miss. I would say if you do want to print a printer out of CF nylon, print a test piece first, um, put some tension on it, like load it up with a screw and check for creep over some time. Um, heat cycle it a few times if possible. Like put it in a printer enclosure and heat it up, cool it down. And just make sure that your your nylon isn't gonna creep on you. So yeah. Uh, 
uh, printers that print a range of plastics should not have printed parts. The problem is, then you're starting to require custom machine parts for your printer. Like, the whole thing with Voron is you don't need any fancy tools or custom components to build one. You can build it with all off-the-shelf components with common household tools. Uh, what hot end do you, I prefer to use? Um, right now, it, they're honestly personal preference. Like, Toasty Boy is using a, a mosquito because I have one. I have ones that are using dragonflies, I have ones that are using dragon. Um, the one handed nozzle change is nice, but I don't change nozzles too often. Um, they all perform just fine. They all heat up just fine. Honestly, hot ends are... Depends how much you want to spend. Because honestly, looking back, there's been a lot of talk about hot ends. I ran a straight E3D V6 in my Voron in, in V226. And this printer right here, when it was a V2, a V2.1, and a V2.2, so for almost two years, it ran an E3D V6 and had no problems. So, honestly, it really depends on what you want to spend and your quality of life uh, requirements. What were the belt coffins? Okay, the belt coffins. Let me see here. Anyways, the belt coffins were the original design for the uh, the AB motor mounts, and originally on the V2.0. Actually, I have a video on my YouTube channel. Uh, let's go back. Let's go way back. Content. There we go. This thing sounds horrible. This thing sounds absolutely horrible. Um, go back. Go back. The belt coffins were the original AB motor mounts back when the belts ran across the front of the V2. And the problem with them was is they were very um, restricted and it was very hard to get into them. So with the printed idlers, you would chew up and destroy your belts and the, in the coffins. So there was that. So let's see here. So this is my 2.0. This was this is V226 in its first iteration. So you can see back here, these are the belt coffins. So the belts would come in. Focus. Wow, I couldn't record videos back then. Okay, so the belts would come in, come around an idler, go around the 20 tooth, and then come out here. So they were really stacked, and the problem is there are printed idlers in here. So you can kind of see the blue there of the printed idler, and uh, see if I can get it from over here. Wow, the, the V2.0 tool head was chonky. But you can see right there. That right there is an F623 bearings because it used all F623 bearings with a printed tooth sleeve on it. They exploded all the time. Like they did not last. Um, the V2.0, while innovative, had a lot of problems and the belt coffins were one because those uh, idlers sleeves would explode inside the belt coffin and you had to take apart the whole thing to swap it out. It was, <sighs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah.
uh, my spider said bye. Honestly, it's a shame about the spider QC issues. I, I, my spider is in V226 is holding up just fine. I, I got a, a V1.0 variant. Mine's holding up just fine. Um, luckily, knock on wood. Uh, it is good to see that they are replacing those that are damaged or are breaking. But from what it looks like, they simply are running into QC issues. The board itself is good. Um, the, the, they fix the issues that the original revision had and they have a new revision coming out. Um, I think from what it looks like, they just, the demand was higher than they thought and they ran into production QC issues. That's what it kind of looks like. Um, it's a shame because on paper, it's a great board. Um, but if they can work out the kinks and they stop having issues, it's a good board. I have an octopus. Uh, hopefully this week, I won't be streaming it. I'm going to do a video on it. But I will be putting an octopus in V2 uh, Tallboy back here. It's getting an octopus at some point. You want me to show you what I'm hiding? Sure. There you go. Yeah, Fizek. Um. The board that ran V226 for almost three years and gave me absolutely zero issues was a Fizek Duet. This is a Duet 2, a Fizek one. I ran this thing for three years and I had zero issues with it. This board was rock solid. I still want to put it back in something because 2660s are beefy drivers. I'm trying to think where I could put this. Lighting is horrible. Hello there. Hello. Yeah, it's just blown out. Uh, let me see if I can adjust my levels here. Uh, your video. Brightness. Exposure helps a bit. There we go. That's a bit better. That's better. Is that okay there? Reduce the ISO. Well, it's a webcam. I don't have that much options. Yeah, sorry guys, it's a webcam, so I, I don't really have a lot of options when it comes to uh, settings for it. So. There we go. Wow, this sounds so bad. <laughs> At the end of the zip tie. What? Any oh for any tips on getting zip ties through the holes on the afterburner ducts? Mine come out very tight. Um, smaller zip ties or um, more tuning of your print um, is pretty much the only real options. So turn off autofocus. Is it autofocusing? Video focus auto. See, I can go all blurry and make it all fancy. Or I can do that. Yeah, we'll go with that. Okay. There we go. Okay. 
There we go. Okay. There we go. Any advice for the best way to cut a lead screw? Um, you need a chop saw type thing. Um, look up a chop saw. You, 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 abrasive cutting wheel is what you really want. That's what I've cut mine with. Um, you, you want like something like this. So abrasive cutting wheel, one of these. On the switch wire, how do I install the diode? Um, what do you mean the diode? Like for the uh, the PL08 for the, like the inductive probe diode? A uh, Dremel? A uh, Dremel with a, with a cutoff wheel might be able to do it. Cutoff wheel on an angle grinder. Yeah, you need you need something with an abrasive cutting wheel. That's what you need. I use a chop saw because I have one at work. But um, abrasive cutting wheel is what you want to use. Now you can use one with a um, a five inch disc, like a, a grinder. You can use one with like an air grinder. You can use one with a Dremel. If you have a chop saw, those are awesome. But yeah, with a Dremel, if you have an abrasive cutting wheel, it might work. $30 Harbor Freight six inch chop saw. Honestly, yeah. It, it, you're cutting through steel. Like it, it's steel. It's not, you don't try taking a hacksaw to it. You'll probably hate life. Okay, so we got the uh, we got the base done of our uh, biggest chungus, Carlos. Um, okay, so if you look at the manual, uh, printer is one switch wire manual. Do, 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 do. Downloading right now. I'm pretty sure it's called out in the manual. Let me find it here. Do we have? Oh, we don't have wiring. Okay, it's not covered in the manual. Um, help documentation. Okay, yeah, that is something we're going to have to f update. Uh, for anyone on the team that is watching, the man not all the manuals have the uh, how to wire stuff up properly. So the switch wire doesn't have it. Okay, so what you're going to do is go to the Voron Design website, go to the V2, um, look at the manual for the V2. So if you open up your Voron V2 manual at the bottom, there's a section on wiring. Okay. Where is it? Is it? It's around here. It's gotta be in here. I just built it. It should be in here. What the heck's going on with the manuals? Something's going on with the manuals. How are we missing this? Let me go looking for it. What is going on? Help GitHub. Downloads. One point eight manual. Yeah, the wiring for the MCU. All the manuals need a, a, a going over. Like we, we know the manuals need updating. Um, problem is it's actually quite a bit of work to go through the manuals and update them all. So it, it's taking time. Remember all everyone on the team is a volunteer. So we're doing the best we can. Yeah, it's okay. So here's the, oh, this is getting updated. That's why. The old V2 manual. If you want to save this page right here, like save, pause the screen, take a screenshot. But basically on your probe, you're going to have three wires. You're going to have a brown, a blue, and a black wire on your probe. The 
brown wire is your voltage. So you're gonna feed that 24 volts either off an always on pin on your controller board or going directly to the power supply itself, 24 volts. The blue one is the ground. So on your SKR board, it's usually the middle pin. Verify with the pinout of your board. The blue one is gonna to connect to the ground. And then the black one is your signal. So if you look at your uh, end stop pins on SKRs, you have a five volt pin, you have a ground pin, and you have a signal pin. The signal pin is the black wire. That gets the BAT85 diode. You solder it in line. If you go back and watch my V1.8 stream, um, I did this on stream. Um, the wiring, I think the first part wiring I did it, or the second part. The part where I wire up the SKR, I solder it on. Um, the black line on the BAT85, that points towards the probe. So the wire that goes to the probe, the black line on the BAT85 goes towards the probe, okay? The part with no black line goes to the controller board. So cut the wire, usually inside the enclosure part, don't do it in part of the drag chain. Solder this in and then put a heat shrink over it or something. Yeah. So there you go. Oh, you move the MCU stuff to the dock site. Okay. So yeah, if you're on the uh, Voron Design website, go to help documentation, build electrical wiring. Cables, stepper motor identifying symptoms of miswired motors, DC wiring setup. Inductive probe wiring. So it has, it tells you how to do it here, but it doesn't show a picture. And more on like V1. Okay, got all this here. There's your gantry wires. Yeah, the pictures need to get brought over, it looks like. Yeah. You gotta remember, it's this is all a community project. It's all volunteers doing everything. We do the best we can, but like, I can't do manuals. I can't help on the manuals. I cannot do them. I just, I can't. I, I can barely draw stick people in MS Paint, so. I do the videos. Is the diode better closer to the probe or board? It, um, I have, I always keep mine in the controller, like in the air, in the, um, right next to the controller. So what I would do is I'll cut the wire, solder the probe in, and then usually I have about two or three more inches of wire that go into the controller board. So usually it's close to the controller board. On paper, it doesn't matter where in the run it is. Cause all you're doing is dropping that 24 volt signal down to something that won't fry your board. Cause if you don't put the bat 85 diode and you plug it in, you're going to feed 24 volts to a signal pin. It's going to go boom. You don't want it to go boom. What makes the inductive pro better than a BL touch? Um, cheaper, more reliable, um, and they're solid state. So they don't fall apart on you like a BL touch. Um, a lot of us on the team have run BL touches over the years. They don't like heat. Inside an enclosed heated printer, they run into issues. And the inductive probe is plenty good enough because uh, most of the enclosed printers, except for the switch wire, have a separate micro switch for adjusting your Z offset. So temperature drift isn't a thing you need to worry about with them. So printer's printing. Um, it's 950. Wisers. Everyone get a toasty, a tasty drink right now. The spider doesn't need a bat 85. Correct. The spider does not need the bat 85 because there is one uh, end stop pin. Check the um, the pinout diagram. There's a diagram on the the Fizek website for the spider. The if you're looking at the controller board, you have six end stops. One, two, three, four, five, six. The bottom right one, if you're looking at the board right side up, the bottom right one is designed for an inductive probe and there's jumpers. So you could tell it that it feed it either 24 volts uh, for the inductive probes, five volts for a Pinda or no volts or something if you want to use that as like a traditional end stop. So yes, yeah, so you don't need the BAT85 diode with the spider. I don't know about the, uh, the octopus though. I have to look into that still. Because the spider, so with the spider board, um, Fizek contacted the Voron design team, said, hey, 
So we want to make a board basically specifically for the V2. Is that okay? Um, they sent over a few development units to some of the guys on the team who do have PCB design experience. And like they went over the board, they tested it, provided some feedback. Hey, can you guys put a five volt power supply on it that can power a full size Raspberry Pi? That would be sweet. They did. Um, can you make sure that it can take an inductive probe? You don't need a bat 85. They made that. So they, they did it. They took some suggestions from the team and then they put out the board. Um, we actually have no, like, they basically asked for permission to do it. They took some advice and then they made the board. So we have no actual direct control over the board, but that's how that came about. Pinda versus Super Pinda. I've never used a Pinda or a Super Pinda. Um, the thing I don't like about the Pinda and the Super Pinda, the sense distance is very small on it. It's like two millimeters. I like having my probes above the nozzle, like two or three millimeters. And my nozzle probing the bed with the nozzle or the, the probe tripping with the nozzle two or three millimeters above the bed because with your gantry if your gantry is really racked for whatever reason if you have a really short sense distance there is a chance your nozzle can hit the bed before the sensor goes off if your gantry is really racked i've seen it can you print voron parts and resin you can print them in anything resin doesn't quite work too well um, i've seen resin parts fail by uh, they get brittle essentially So we may have some under extrusion issues. Yeah, we got a bit of under extrusion issues. Oh yeah, and you can't put heat sets into resin. Resin is a uh, a thermal thermal form or thermal set plastic. I think it is. There's two types of plastics. There's plastics that you can remelt, and plastics that won't remelt. They just burn. Resin you can't remelt, so you can't put heat sets into it. Have I seen the Vetus Dragon Voron Edition? Yes, I have. I don't have one, but I've seen it. And to my knowledge, nobody's received one yet. Thermoset, yeah. I work in injection molding. I should know that. I just can never remember which one's which. Flammable and inflammable mean the same thing? What? Nobody in Shenzhen is binder jetting. Honestly, I'm surprised. Um, I've, I've seen people are machining them. You can get machined aluminum parts. Um, An MJF afterburner would be pretty nice but it, it's diminishing returns remember every boron is pretty much built with just printed abs parts and nobody's having issues so what does going to a more expensive process get you did i see the 48 volt mod? yeah that, the going 48 volts on stepper drivers have been have been a thing for a while um so i i've known about doing that for a while um the the taco raven can take 48 volts, I believe. When we designed our own controller board, like two years back, um, we have the option, like we made it the option of being able to feed it separate voltage specifically for the motors. Cause it's a, the, the drivers are directly on the board. They're 2130, so that's a little outdated. But yeah, you can feed stepper motors 48 volts, no problem. Josh Murray did it before. A lot of people have done it way before. It's, it's always been a thing. It's just nobody ever really did it. When is the Spider vs. Octopus Showdown stream? Um, I gotta put the octopus in. It won't be a stream. I'm gonna do just a, a standard dedicated video on it. Um, I've done enough wiring streams. Um, plus it, I'll probably just do it bits and pieces just for timing. But um, they'll both perform exactly the same with Clipper. It doesn't matter which board you pick. Pick the board that has the features you want and at the price you want and works. Like Clipper, it doesn't matter. Remember, the fastest speed benchies right now are, you know, Nitrum's doing four minute speed benchies on an eight bit tri gorilla board with Clipper. The board doesn't really matter with Clipper. Buy what you want that has the features you want at the price you want. There you go. I'm still using 12 volt, you madman. Let 
one is reasonable. I'll never stop trying. You can get Sherpas. Oh God, Sherpas. Um, I still remember, I think it's Triangle Labs. If you look on the Triangle Labs page, I think it is. They have um, pictures of the Sherpa and I think they, it's, I think it's the Triangle Labs one. They sell them like printed parts kits of it and the parts are like cracked because it cracks a lot because it, there's a, they stripped it down so much. It's like a racehorse where it breaks really easily. And again, I'm slinging around a full size LGX with dual rails and I'm having no issues with speed. So stripping it down to save a few grams isn't really my, it ain't my bag, baby. It ain't my thing. Yeah, PTG is flexible. So like my original V1.0 uh, or V1.5, um, tall boy was originally a V1. Um, I originally printed in PTG and then I reprinted the whole thing in ABS and after swapping ABS parts, the parts were cleaner. I had less ringing um, and the parts were just cleaner. So. So we do have a bit of under extrusion on the top layer, that's for sure. Sanity, thank you for becoming a member. I don't know how much time is left in the print. 18%, oof. I don't know if it's estimating based on layer height. According to this, it is a hour and 45 minute print. And it's been 45 minutes, so. It, but I don't know what the default acceleration values are in this thing. Can I, can I increase speeds, options? More speed. Okay, um, I set the speed to 125%. Fan is max. Okay. So I set the speed for 125%. Printers can always run a lot faster than people think they can, but this is 8-bit Marlin, so we'll see. Could be slow retraction. Ah, how is the retraction? Oh yeah, that's a slow retraction. Well, the settings are, it's running a Mark 3S profile. So I slice this using um, generic PLA Prusa Mark III profile. And it's the speed profile. So yeah, um, what's my extruder running at? Uh, retraction speed is, it doesn't say. 35 millimeters a second. So yeah, it's, you know what though? It's honestly probably the firmware accelerations and max speed are pretty uh, pretty low. I really don't have control of that because it's not a clipper. I just can't go in there and quickly change it. Uh, CF nylon. Uh, the problem with CF nylon is a lot of them have creep issues apparently. Nylons have creep issues. So mine I think is okay, but we'll find out. If not, I got a spool of uh, CF uh, PC I'm gonna try. using a direct drive retraction profile. I did uh, lengthen the retraction distance. So it is retracting at four, retracting four millimeters instead of the default uh, uh, like 0.5. So I, I did change that. CF polycarbonate, yeah. What was the reason for not using CFPC from the get-go? Because I wanted to try CF nylon first. Oh yeah, the accelerations on this thing are probably like dog slow.
Has anyone tried PC? Uh, a bunch of people have tried PC. The problem is some PC blends have issues with, um, they have issues with the, uh, some PCs break down if you run them with, uh, grease and oil. Grease and oil exposure will cause some PCs to basically delaminate. So you gotta be careful with it. Um, I've seen it happen before to a few people's printers. So it's like test it first to make sure you don't have a PC blend that does. What's the orbiter give you that the LGX doesn't? Uh, size, higher, lightness, cheaper. Like I have an orbiter right here. I just need a printer to put it in, but it, it's light, compact, some people really like lightness. Some people, for them, going light is what they want to do. I'm personally not a huge thing. Um, I'm saving this for a project. I want to put it in something. I'm just not 100% sure what I want to put it in yet. Because I am running a Galileo in Tallboy. And a Galileo is basically an orbiter, but repackaged for the afterburner tool head that the that Vorons use. So, I'm still trying to hopefully find get my hands on an Ultimaker. I want to put that in it. How much does it weigh? Like 140 grams, I believe. And that's with the motor. So an orbiter with the NEMA 14 uh, geared motor weighs 148 grams roughly. And then a um, afterburner, which is the stock extruder for a, or the clockwork, which is the stock extruder for the afterburner, weighs 195 grams. So this is about 50 grams lighter than this. And it's higher gearing, but it's a NEMA 14. Here's the thing with extruders though. Um, pretty much as soon as you go with a dual drive gear, so like a Bontech dual drive gear setup, you get diminishing returns. Going from like these crappy stock extruders with a single flat drive gear um, and a, a bearing idler, once you upgrade from that to something like an Orbiter or a BMG, um, any other extruder upgrade is incremental. Like swapping uh, V226 is ru now running an LGX, right? Originally I ran this guy, I ran the clockwork. Going from this to an LGX, I can't even tell a difference in print quality. Like there is literally within margin of error difference in print quality. Um, it comes down to personal choice. The LGX is an off the shelf component. It's a COTS thing. It's a commercial off the shelf. That means you are getting commercial build quality. You're getting commercial reliability and you're getting a warranty and support. So when it comes out of it, or out of the box, it's built and good to go. With a clockwork, you have to build it. There's a chance you could build it wrong. If something goes wrong with it, you have to fix it. With an LGX, you have a whole company behind it and it should just work out of the box and everything should line up perfectly and it should just work. It's plug and play. So it's like a, you know, it's always a, with 3D printing, do I spend the money or do I build it myself? What, what do you want? Um, Who's doing Murph? I live in Canada and I can't cross the border, so I will not. I would love to go to Murph. Um, I will be going to Murph next year because Murph is like a four hour drive to for me. It's literally like just across the border. Um, however, I only have one shot and I'm not going there not fully vaxxed. So I don't even think I can get into the US for that reason. Is anyone from the Voron team going? I don't believe so. Um, we were gonna go, Murph 2020, we had two booths rented. We had something like 15 people from the Voron team going. Um, and then COVID happened, canceled everything. Nobody's really going to Murph this year. Like there's no big, some companies are going, but like Joel's not going, Tom's not going. Um, very few of the big names are going. I don't think E3D's going. Um, yeah. So, we'll see. 
Somebody might go and bring a Voron, but nobody on the team is officially going, I don't believe. Uh, there's open appointments out the woozy where I live. My volume mean that Canada's vaccine. So, uh, Joe, here's the thing with um, the way Canada is doing the vaccine. Um, they're prioritizing getting everyone the first shot first. Um, right now, I think we're in the high 70% of our population has at least one shot. Um, let me check. Um, yeah, so right now, uh, yeah, so we're, uh, we're getting there right now. Um, at least 24, like Canada, what population, what 37 million, um, 66% are fully vaccinated and 17% have at least one vaccine or I mean are fully vaxxed. Um, so we're doing pretty good compared to some other countries. Um, I've got my one. I can book for my second because they do it in tiers, right? You have to be within certain age groups in certain like areas. So June 28th is when I can book my second one. Um, you have to remember though, Canada, we're at the disadvantage that we don't have any in-house production. We had to buy all our vaccines from other countries and other countries take care of themselves first. Like the U.S. is making a shit ton of them, but they wouldn't give any up to us for the longest time. Um, they're saying by the end of July, I believe anyone should be able to get fully vaxxed. So we're, we're getting there. We're getting there. So. So. So, yeah, so. It, it's it's going pretty good. Like I live in, I live outside of a city of 200,000. The whole like area that I live in is like a quarter million population. We're down to like five to 10 cases a day locally. And they're mostly just community. Like there, there's no community transmission here. It's just, you know, somebody gives it to a bunch of guys at work at their same place or somebody gives it to a few family members. Like there's no community transmission here really. Yeah, June 28th. I, I'm in the... Uh, I'm in the healthy middle-aged adult, so I, I don't get priority for anything. How's the UK doing on the rollout? So, uh, percent fully vaccinated, 46. Yeah. Um, you gotta remember though, they make it in-house. Like we had to buy all ours. Like we, we, countries take care of their own first. It's just how it is, right? So we had to buy it from Europe and the US and they're prioritizing their own first. So we're finally getting a lot of people vaccine it's like jumped up crazy originally they were saying like end of july early august is when i'd be able to get my second and they moved it up like a month and a half so so it's getting there i i got a feeling like by the end of the summer we should be good to go um we don't really have a lot of the delta variant spread out across canada it's mostly in like the toronto gta area i believe and i think manitoba um but like i live down in a border city but it like Canada is very spread out. So yeah, there's, you know, population centers, but like I live in a city, like a city of 200,000 years, quarter million to find the next city that large is a two hour drive north. And then the next city is another two hours. So if you're not traveling between cities, like it's very bubbled the way Canada is laid out, populations are bubbled. So people from Calgary aren't really traveling to Edmonton consistently it's not like the u.s where you can drive for hours and you never leave a city because it's just urban sprawl and everyone's on top of everyone which facts are they pushing um pfizer and moderna i i got i'm pfizer gang yo um but pfizer and moderna they've pretty much put a halt to the astrazeneca and johnson and johnson i don't think is approved here yet so This print is actually printing pretty good. Like I will give it, you know, the benefit of the doubt. Problem is we're also really locked down. Well, 
everyone, oh, it's the end of the world, the government, you know, controlling everything. But um, right now, like, you can't go into a mall. The only stores you can go into are stores that have outward facing entrances. So, like, strip malls are okay, but you can't go, like, into an enclosed mall. So, you can only stores that you can get into from the outside, you're allowed in. Um, and it's like 15% capacity. You have to wear a mask anywhere inside. Um, limited, you're only allowed like 10 people at your house. Like, still in lockdown mode. Um, no, uh, can I make calls without a cell phone? Honestly, uh, I still get, I don't have the 5Gs yet. I, I'm, I'm angry. Side effects. Um, my first day after I got my first shot, I felt like crap, but that was only a day. Australia's pushing the AstraZeneca. That's the one with the blood clotting issue, right? All this uh, Rona talk is probably going to get my stream flagged. <laughs> They're listening for that. What's Hana doing? Yeah, so I'm actually kind of liking the way this printer is laid out for the most part. There, there are some things I'm liking. There are some things I'm not liking, obviously. I do like their tool head. It's one solid piece of aluminum with the uh, the bearings press fit in. Um, it is a pretty simple setup. Like, one thing I'm not liking with this is you have, where, I need a pointer. I need a pointy thing. There we go. This will work. So, you have your your hottie butt bit here, right? So, your hottie bit is down here, and then you got your heat brake coming up. However, the actual, like, fan is here. This fan right here, because there's two fans. There's a 3030. Uh, blower and a 30 or, or 30 30 um, are they both 30 30 just regular yeah they're both just regular the same fan but they're both 30 30 fans and they're blowing only one's blowing up here so the cooling is up here so I could see this thing having heat creep issues because um, the heat has to go all the way up to here before it's like bled out like this should be down here like these fans should be down here so I don't know Like, I like it that it's aluminum, but it's designed kind of... Oop. There we go. Does the bottom rod feel warm? Not really. Not any more than the top rod. Uh, what's the realistic acceleration for his V0.1? Everything above 5K gives me belt skipping. Can I do more? And I need to adjust tension. Um, oh, and thank you for the five. One second here. It depends. What motors are you running? Are you running what mo? I need to know what motors you're running first, because that will affect it. Where does the front overhang look like? It's not bad. I'll I'll, I'll take like obviously when the print's done, I'll take pictures and post it up. The bomb LDOs. So, um, if you are running the... Okay, so this is OMC's. 5K, sh like, 5K is a lot. Honestly, 5K is a lot. It's 120 millimeters. You're at... Beyond 5K, I don't think you're even going to hit top speeds. Um, adjust motor currents. You may have to bump your currents up. But, buddy right here, this is a video of somebody's uh, 247 printing. Um, they are running the OMC 54 millimeter long stepper motors. Um, this is a thousand millimeters a second on NEMA 14th, and that's real time. Mm. 
Look at those belts bounce back there. So uh, when people are like, oh, you need O drives to go fast. This is NEMA 14s. Now I believe he is running them at 48 volts though. Motors perform better at higher voltages. This slow speed is as fast as like some printers. So yeah, so that's 40,000 uh, Excel at uh, 1,000 millimeters second, current 1.6 amp. And I believe he has, uh, he is running them at 48 volts, I believe. Problem is pushing plastic that fast is kind of hard. You're still limited to, uh, you know, 30 millimeters a second cubed, so. So, like, you could always slap a, a V6 on a pick and place machine. Pick and place machines are insanely fast, but you can only melt plastic so quick and then solidify it so quick. Speed benchies look like poop. Like even Vez 3D, his, his O-Drive machine, um, he's going real quick, but there's, he's still only doing like individual small things. Like when you can print off a full plate of ABS parts and they all come out perfect and they're not warping and they're not popping off the bed and they're all strong because you're not blasting them with a fan constantly, then I will be impressed. Because right now the speed benchy thing, it's still cool, don't get me wrong. I'm not against speed benchies. But it's the equivalent of overclocking your computer with liquid nitrogen. Okay, people who do like the, the, the extreme overclocking, you're overclocking your printer with liquid nitrogen or your, your computer with liquid nitrogen so you can go crazy fast, get those really high numbers. But you're not playing Minecraft like that. You're not playing your video games like that. You're not, you know, surfing Reddit like that. You're, there's a difference between a speed run and everyday use. So that's why like Doc has an open, I don't know if he still has it, but if you were like able to shave like an hour or two off of the standard PIF plate for like accent parts, he was like willing to give a whole bunch of money to the charity of your choice. And I think nobody took him up on that because, oh, single benchy fast, but optimizing production, oh, that's boring. So. Were you getting a Nova? No. Why would I want a shiny volcano? I've seen the future. First printers were not quality demons. Printers are getting there. Like CNC machines have been doing this kind of stuff since forever. And now like stuff like input shaper. CNC machines can have load sensors on it. When you're running a CNC machine, it's kind of like a professional CNC machine. It can tell load on the tool head and automatically adjust speeds and feeds and everything to compensate. We're just now getting things like input shaper on 3D printers. We are so far behind in terms of like the software support for these kind of machines. And that's running everything on a single board. A lot of people have the, oh, it's gotta be on one board. Um, you're limited to 130, 140 megahertz STM processors, uh, core, what is it, M4s or ARM4s or whatever the duet's using, three, 400 megahertz. At least now with Clipper, we're able to, you know, harness the power of a quad core Raspberry Pi to do whatever the heck we need it to. Um, cause that's how CNC machines run. Outside of 3D printing, like CNC machines all run with a controller running clinic, uh, clinics, running Linux running the machine and everything's kind of hooked up to that. So we're finally getting to kind of that point. What settings do those people slice with speed benchies? Really fast settings. I did a stream where I did speed benchies. If you want to see like uh, playing around, trying to optimize speed. I think on that stream, I only got down to like an eight or nine minute benchy. I managed to do one good one under 10 minutes. And then everything started falling apart because I was just using a stock V2. I didn't have anything fancy. Uh, Self-built i3 type frame with a duet and Wi-Fi for 100. Oh, that's not bad. A duet, like if it, a duet two is still a great controller board. Like I still have my duet two. I really want to put it in something because it's got a good processor. It's got all the inputs. 
and it's got five beefy stepper motors, like 2660s. Yeah, you don't have things like Stealth Chop, but I don't run Stealth Chop anyways. I'd rather have the extra torque. So it's still a good board. Like it runs Clipper great. Clipper harnesses the power of a 10 year old computer though. Yeah, but it's better than a, uh, a quad core 1.4 gigahertz, whatever the Raspberry Pi 4s use versus a 138 megahertz STM32 that also has to run everything else. So remember, it's just doing math basically. Thirty-seven percent. Should I increase the speed again? Let's increase the speed again. More. Speed. Okay, so right now we are at 175% speed. I'm pretty sure we're acceleration limited though. Yeah, we are definitely acceleration limited. Those curves are not looking too good. Uh, let's take a look here. This is what we, oh God, it doesn't even have 84988s. This is what I'm running. It's a, an A5S main board, sports a snappy arm base. So it is a 32 bit STM32. So it should run Clipper just fine. Um, STM32, 24 volts, A5984s. The heck is an A5984? A5S all main control V1.1. So there's my controller board. So what do we got? What do we got? We got, okay, so we got end stops there. Screen, fan, 24 volt, thermistors, X, Y, well, Z2, where's Z1? Unless it's a Y splitter. X, Y, Z, E0, Z2. Okay, there it is. Yeah. Yeah. It is what it is. So it should run Clipper. I should be able to put Clipper on this. Actually, uh, I don't see pots. I don't see pots on this. How do you adjust motor current? So on the bottom, I have this heat sink. And I'm not seeing a potentiometer. Do these things support being able to adjust the current on the fly? What the heck is it? Okay, let me A5984. A5984. Uh, direct drive that prints um, BMG any dual drive 
you you want an extruder that is dual drive and geared. So BMG, LGX, Orbiter, um, those are all good. So it's a drop-in replacement for an A4984, proprietary adaptive, low RDNS output, single supply, micro stepping up to 32, full torque step mode, short ground, low current sleep mode. Applications, video, video security cameras. Yeah, I don't know if I can adjust the current in these guys. There's no micro stepping or anything. There's no pins or anything. So it might be just kind of you get what you get in terms of motor current. 35 volt cap. So this thing could only take up to 24 volts, but it is a 24 volt board. So it should have no problem running clipper. music up what do we got right now let's go back to uh do some edm up to 40 volt 2 amp the problem is the uh, controller board only has 35 volt caps so you're not really pushing Might be able to do clipper on here. Here's the pinout. There's the pinout for it. We might be able to do clipper on this guy. Where did that random piece of filament come from? Where did you come from? How does the belly look? The belly looks fine, honestly. Um, like, it, it's definitely some surface imperfections on this thing. This thing, yeah, where is that filming coming from? Oh, you know what? This thing has the, um, yeah, that's an overhang. This thing has the um, power off resume feature. Um, which means it's like saving every line to the SD card. So that causes stuttering, so. Oh, you got your spider going, Greg. Good job, awesome, that's good to hear. It stops and extrudes there. Yeah, it's doing, it's pausing for a second. It's that stupid um, power loss prevention a lot of cheap printers try to market as having, where it basically every time it completes a line of G-code, it saves it to the SD card so it can resume on power loss. The problem is it kind of leads to a stutter every now and then because these boards aren't powerful. Um, so it's a slight hiccup there and uh, yeah. Yeah, there's an overhang there with the finger or the hand. If you look at the, the hand there, it's floating in air. So that's why it's doing that. Oh well. So that's why it's trying to print in here. That's why.
So yeah, we might be able to do Clipper on this guy. We'll see. Although I probably got a feeling I'll probably just swap this Creality board in. Just cuz. Or I'll just put it back in the box. <laughs> I've got eight printers already. Uh, those JG printers are pretty rough. My brother-in-law bought two on a special deal and they ended up going in a box for spare parts. Honestly, I can hear the frame rattling. The only, so far, honestly, I will say this unit right here for the bed. This part I like, this this bed assembly here. It's it's nice and clean, not a lot of exposed parts. Um, like it is eight millimeter screw or eight millimeter rods under the hood there. So maintenance would be a pain. But it is a clean setup. The gantry though is sheet metal, right? Like I can, I can flex this. I can, I can flex this, and it's only held on with like four screws, so it could be a little funky. Plus, you know, the fact that my lead screw violently shakes on rapid Z moves is um, a little disconcerting. Motor mounts are plastic. Like it, it, it is. I don't know. It's a cheap printer. It's functional though. Like it is printing a uh, a big chungus here. It does have like a rippled surface. The surface definitely does have imperfections. Like it is not a smooth surface. Harvest the rods to make a legacy. See, the problem with that is though, I work in a plastic injection mold shop and we have eight millimeter ejector pins and a scrap pin that I can easily grab and they are hardened nitrated H13 versus whatever these are. That's what I use for uh, my Z there. Those are hardened nitrated H13 rods that are bang on for size. Like we're talking 0.01 millimeter undersize. Um, and they are Rockwell of 73, so they are stiff AF. So, um, I'd rather self-source. What type of hot end does this one run? It runs this. It comes with a spare. I do give them credit for sending a spare, but it runs this. It's a uh, PTFE lined, um, what is it, Mark 8? style hot end with a glass bead thermistor. I'm tempted to take off this panel. What is rattling? Keep away, keep children away from printer. Repair the printer only under the guidance of professionals. Make sure they unplug the power cord. Yeah, fair enough. Do not put objects on top of printer. Breaking the law, breaking the law. Getting close to midnight. Yeah, it's uh, 1036 here. We'll see how long this print goes. We're at 47%. What are we at right now? 240 viewers. Yeah, we peaked near 300, 309. That's good. I cannot repair it. I can put it back in the box at some point though. FBI open up. Good whiskey. Um, I'm finishing off my bottle of Weisers. So. There we go. That's killed that. Wife got me a bottle of uh, Jameson, I think, for Father's Day. So. It's because you skipped the shims. What shims? Oh, the washers. Oh, apparently, shims are washers. I forgot to put the washers in. I'm, I'm sure that won't have a massive impact. Hey, 
thank you for choosing JG Aurora. So it's no longer JG Aurora, it's JG Maker. They renamed. Do not leave the operating printer unattended for too long. One to three hours interval is necessary if printer runs over 96 consecutive hours. What does that even mean? Like if you're printing for 96 hours, it's okay to leave it for one to three hours? Do not keep nozzle or hotbed always operating at high temperatures if you are not printing, okay. At least five second on off interval to prevent printer from crashing. Risk of trap fingers. Keep your clothing and all parts of your body away from printer moving part. Okay. Turn off printer immediately when there is smoke or unusual noise when printing. I don't like the wording of that. Turn off printer immediately when. When. That's the key word. If they're saying when there is, that implies there's a chance of it. If they said if, that means, hey, if this happens, but they're saying when this happens. So according to them, this will make smoke and make unusual noise. Well, it's already making unusual noises, so um, just in case, just in case. And yeah. I know it's a meme, but everyone should at least have some form of fire suppression in their printer room because you are working with stuff that can catch fire. Hot ends are hot. Because what is it? Paper catches fire at 451 because of the book. So paper catches fire at 451 and 451 is 232 degrees. So if your hot end is at 232, 232 degrees Celsius and it touches paper, it can catch a fire. So. I have a 12 month warranty on this. So considering this printer is like from 2018, um, honestly, it's, it's not too bad. Like you can go a lot worse for a first printer. It, like if this was one of those, hey, I found it on the side of the road or at a yard sale for like a hundred bucks. Yeah. I wouldn't pay what they're asking for it now. Right now, I think it's 350. Um, I'll update the website or I'll update the description. See, they have a Delta or an IDEX printer. I was hoping it was the IDEX one. That would have been cool. Because honestly, I've, I've never played with an IDEX printer. I would like to play with one. Um, so it's $350. So for $350, that's asking a lot for this. Especially without silent driver or any bed mesh or, or bed leveling probe or anything. Um, but if you could snag this for a really good sale, maybe... those heading out have a good night we might we might tough this one out let it finish
you can get a Prusa Mini. Yeah, it's a smaller print. That's the thing, like, I'll, remember, this is a 2018 printer, right? So this is kind of like a time capsule to before everyone having bed leveling and aluminum extrusions being the norm. Like, this came out when I first got into 3D printing with a Monoprice Select Mini. I got in, oh, 2018, I had, was already into Voron, but late 2017, I got my Monoprice Select Mini. So at the time, this probably would be a very good option. It has a um, runaway detection. Apparently it does have runaway detection. So if it runs away, it'll stop. The exciting conclusion when we take the guy off the bed and look at it and go, okay, have a good night. Yeah, right now it is the uh, Stream Beats EDM uh, track. Collecting dust. No, it won't collect dust. I guarantee you this thing will not be collecting dust because to collect dust, it has to be out in the open. It's going back in the box once it cools down. Warm tips, not cold tips, not hot tips, warm tips. To whom it may, to whom it may, to whom it may, the product you purchase is a DIY kit machine based on responsible attitude for customers. We have done lots of tests before delivery. The joint of main body and base, as well as nozzle, has slight abrasion. We stress this is a, a normai phenomenon. Phenomenon, phenomenon, yeah, phenomenon. It's spelled phenomenon, right? But not normi. Uh, won't affect the printing accuracy and artistic appearance. Please excuse this, this trouble. Thank you very much. Aw. Warm tips for it. It is a mistranslation. It is a mistranslation. You gotta like, uh, language structure with um, different languages is different, right? Like, if you speak English, you know, if you translate something from French or German or any other um, European language to English, odds are the, the sentence structure is almost the same. But in a lot of languages, words are combined. The order of words is different. Um, I, I work with a lot of Vietnamese at work. Um, and they can speak English just fine, but the, the structure of the sentences is just, they're not used to it. So when it comes to like translating stuff, you know, English has a ton of slang and double meanings and you have to know what this means because of a reference or whatever. So if you're just doing direct translation, like hot tips, what does hot tips mean? Like what is hot? Well, there's different types of hot. Is it really hot? Like it, it doesn't translate word for word. That's a word for word translation type thing. Can Clipper run a backup heat sensor wired into the RPI for an AC bend to shut off with a relay? I believe it can. Any tips with good printer uh, Ninja Flex? So I don't have a CR10. Um, the only Creality printer I have is my Ender 3. Um, apparently they have an Ender 7 now. Um, I would like to play with that maybe. We'll see. Um, I would love to get my hands on a belt printer just, just to play around with that thing because it is neat. Um, but any tips with Ninja Flex? Uh, with, okay, so if you're print, printing flexibles, you want a dual drive extruder and you want a short constrained filament path. So um, a Bond Tech of some sort, an Orbiter, um, any, any dual drive extruder, direct feed. Simple as that would probably be your best bet. Yeah, thermal fuse is always good because it just stops.
I can ask Tom if he will send you his freebie. You know Tom? Now, I spoke to Tom about his Voron build. Um, he, if you're following Tom on Twitter, it, I think he's loving it. Um, he, he posted a few videos of that thing ripping along. Um, oh, and, and by the way, if anyone here was like spamming Clipper, why aren't you doing Clipper, Herder, Clipper in Tom's chat? Like, come on, grow up. Like, yes, I love Clipper. It's an awesome firmware. I, it's my firmware of choice. However, I this guy ran RepRap firmware until like several months ago. Like, I was one of the last guys on the Boron team to switch to Clipper from RepRap firmware. RepRap firmware is perfectly fine. He's running a duet. It was given to him for the build. Of course he's going to run a duet. And, like, the printer is working just fine on duet. So, that was... Please don't do that kind of thing. Yeah, Full G still runs RepRap firmware. Like, you can say whatever you want about the firmware of choice, right? It's personal preference, but Duet boards are amazing. I will never fault a Duet board. They're just great boards. But yeah, th this is Tom's V2. Like, yeah. Duet's fine. Rep Rep Firmware is fine. Well, that was a fun build. Uh, we took down a lot of notes about his build because we are working on improving all the documentation. So, so yes. Yeah, he, he's loving it. And the thing is, it's his printer. He built it. He, it's his. You, like, yes, there is a spec. And I, I, like, yes, the team, we used to have, like, things change, okay? Opinions and thoughts on things change, okay? People grow up, opinions change. Yes, the whole War on Design team used to be very against modding and whatnot, okay? Things are different. Like, we, we take a lot more community feedback than we used to. There's mod sections on the Discord. There's mod sections on the GitHub. Yes, there is spec. We do still recommend building the printer spec. However, if you know what you're doing, build within your skill, okay? It's a lot easier to troubleshoot a new build on somebody who's new to 3D printing or does, has never built a printer before if they're building a spec machine. So if it's, hey, I'm having problem extruding. Okay, well, let's take a look at the clockwork. Oh, I'm not running the clockwork. I'm using some random extruder I found on Thingiverse. Why isn't it working? Well, we can't really help with that too much. But if it's like, hey, I'm using an LGX. Okay, that's you know pretty much a stock option. We can troubleshoot that. We know how that works. So it's a, yeah. And then, you know, there's always people like, oh, uh, you keep things behind closed doors with development. Yeah, a lot of open source projects keep things behind closed doors, again, the, the finished product that's out there is a fully tested printer we know works. We know pretty much the ins and outs and we can help people build. If we're putting out, you know, nightly builds of updates to hot end designs and cooling and, well, I, I, I reprinted my hot end mount five times in the past week because you guys keep changing it. Oh, I'm angry. People bitch about that kind of stuff. So it's just easier to have a fully tested release out there and then just put out the fully tested updates. So, but again, it's a DIY build. Run what you brung. Build it how you want. But if you go outside the norm and you come to the dev team help, like looking for help, we may not be able to help you because we may not be running it like that. So. Have you ever ventured into custom start G-code and installing a brush somewhere on your printer to clean the nozzle before prints? Um, so I do have custom start G-code on um i've started using a more complex one if you go back to my last stream last week's stream with uh toasty boy here i was showing it off i don't use a brush i use nozzles that don't really build up gunk so i've never dealt with the brush i've never bothered with it i've never had an issue without it but my custom start g code um i got it from uh i think kilo cubit let me his and i tweaked it a little bit but it's basically 
Machine homes, heats the nozzle up to 180 degrees. It homes again. Um, does either a bed or um, a, a Z tilt or a quad gantry level. Um, does that. Then the nozzle heats up to whatever the printing temperature is. And then it does another final Z home for the Z offset at the nozzle at temperature. And then it does a purge line and then it prints. So. Uh, I noticed he torqued down the Z pivot mounts. My understanding is the joint should be allowed to slightly pivot. So with the, um, there's enough flex in the frame that if you torque them down with the frame relatively in position, it's not a huge issue. What a, myself and a lot of people do is you leave them loose you do a, you run the QGL, so you tram your gantry out. You do it like two or three times. So your gantry is as flat and as trammed to the bed as you can make it. And then you lock them down. That's what I've done on both of my V2s and it works pretty good. So. Four on night laser could be, oh God, yeah. I, I've, you know how many times devs have taken, like I have taken parts directly off the print bed into the garbage. Build paint straight to trash. Oh yeah, that's a common thing. Any thoughts on Tiny Machines firmware? What is Tiny Machines firmware? I have to do some Googling. Tiny Machines, what is Tiny Machines? Pretty firmware. What is it? They're reseller. Oh, is it just Marlin? Is it just, okay. I've used Marlin in the past. I haven't used Marlin in a long time, but taking Marlin firmware and adjusting configuration settings and then just compiling that that's just adjusting your settings. That's not making new firmware. I don't know why they call them all, all like my custom firmware. It's like my, my custom clipper config. It's just a config file. It's not adjusting the clipper firmware. The firmware is the firmware. You're adjusting settings like parameters within the firmware. It isn't spitting out new firmware. I don't know. I, because people ask me that, oh, what, what firmware are you running? Like clipper. Oh, can I have your firmware? No, it's, it's clipper. It's clipper. Clipper is a firmware. There's a file of settings, but that's just a config file. You're not adjusting the firmware, but with Marlin, when you adjust settings in the Arduino IO or whatever interface that is, and you hit save and compile, that's now new firmware. I, I don't know. Yeah, too much compiling. Honestly, I'm like, yes, Marlin has a ton of the features now that you need to run Vorons and you can run a V2 on Marlin. Like the very first V2 was running on Marlin. Um, but the compiling, the fact that, you know, Hey, look at this guys. Um, printers, what's on, what's online right now? Um, uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, Toasty Boy's online. Hey, uh, system, printer config, edit. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, core XY, ready? Delta. Save, restart. Hey, look, my printer is now a Delta. Now, obviously I got to change some settings here for pins and whatnot, but like, oh, hey, um, my printer is now a core XY. And my maximum acceleration is now 5,000. Save, restart. Boom, done. Like. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I will never go back to Marlin because of that reason. Use TH3D from, oh God, don't get me started on TH3D. I've had one experience with him and it was pretty much not, I don't know. Tom locked down the hot end, bolt slips on the end. He's gonna have fun changing hot ends. I don't think he plans on changing hot ends too often. Like honestly, I, I rarely change the hot ends in mine, but. So basically my only experience with TH3D um, is years ago, he popped into the Voron Discord. Um, 
immediately asked if he could start selling printed parts for Piff, like Printed Ford, because Printed Ford's been around for a while. Um, he wanted to volunteer his um, print farm, I guess, of Ender 2s or Ender 3s, whatever he has, to do Piff. Um, we told him to do Piff, you have to build a Voron. Like, that's the point of Printed Ford. It's four Vorons by Vorons. Okay? He said, sure thing. And then he left. And we've never interacted with him since. That's pretty much all I've ever interacted with the guy. Yeah. Plus, I thought he quit several times. I've heard he's quit several times and then come back. I don't know. There's a lot of drama. I, I, I don't go into like the general... Th I'm on the, the, the 3DP Discord, but I, I don't like hang out there a lot. Um, but I, I've seen drama with him. But My only interaction with him is him showing up, trying to sell printed parts, us telling him he needs a Voron to do that, and then he left. So. He quits monthly. Yeah. That, and I'm sorry, $70 for a bed probe. Uh, you can buy a PL08 for $5, or $3 off AliExpress, and a Bat85 diode for like $5 for a thousand of them. And it'll work off spring steel. So you can buy a spring steel flex plate, an energetic spring steel flex plate and magnet with PEI, a... a China Omron inductive probe, and a Bat85 diode, cheaper than his inductive, his probe. And it works with pretty much any firmware, and you can plug it directly into the uh, your ZN stop. So, I don't know. Plus, he sells like a hundred dollar SKR board, basically. I don't know. This thing is fun. Back to printing. YouTube dramas. I don't know. I try to avoid YouTube drama. Yeah, I'm a human. I'm going to have opinions on people, but I don't try to participate in drama. I will say things about people that I know, but I don't go out like, oh, so-and-so said this. Yeah. Like, uh, what is it? Design prototype test. Um, he's mentioned me a few times. I've watched a few of his videos. I got nothing against the guy. Like, some things he does I agree with, some things he does I don't agree with. Everyone's entitled to their opinion, but he does his thing, I do mine. All the power to him. Doesn't affect me, doesn't affect him. This whole business is custom Marlin. How can you make a business around a custom open source firmware? I don't know. Uh, not as smart as any other thinks he is. But you know what? Nobody is as smart as they think they are. There's so much stuff people don't know everything about. So you can't fault a guy for trying, right? Like, I, I've misspoken. I've said wrong things. Like, nobody, nobody's perfect, right? It happens. So yeah, I don't know. If you don't like somebody's content, just don't watch it. Like I'm on Twitter. Twitter is a Twitter is a hive mine of just junk at times. But you know what? I follow people who I like. Comments that I don't like, I just don't pay attention to. Like, you don't have to dive into a shit pile all the time. If you see something you don't like, just Ignore it. It's the internet. You can just hit block and mute. Just, yeah. So, we're here to make plastic boats. Let's make plastic boats. How's the difficulty getting into Clipper? Uh, Dougal, at first it will seem a bit daunting, but basically if you can install Octoprint and you can edit a, like a, a doc file and copy and paste commands into a command line, it's honestly not hard. I do have a few videos on my channel. Um, I have a playlist of Clipper videos. Um, I recommend watching the video where I just kind of give it a general overview of Clipper and then watch the video on how I install like an Ender 3 V2 to give you an idea how Clipper installs and how it works. Um, 
it's a very robust firmware that gives you a lot of options for tweaking your printer and it's very good pretty much you could take any printer plug a raspberry pi into it and send it zipping along um my ender 3 v2 stock we were doing prints at 300 millimeters a second 5k excel and all i did was install clipper on it so can you mitigate from marlin to clipper um as long as your controller board is supported by clipper you can install clipper now it's a completely new firmware so you are flashing the board so you will lose it. So if, make, if you are running Marlin and you want to save anything, make sure you back it up. But you can install Clipper on most modern controller boards. What firmware is it? It's running Marlin of some sort. It's a 32-bit controller board. I'm assuming it's running 32-bit Marlin. Or actually, I don't know. It's from 2018. It could be. It could be SmoothieWare. This could be SmoothieWare. <laughs> I don't know. Marlin can't print at five millisecond job key skip rate. Oof. Yeah, it's from 2018. So it was 8 bit, uh, 32 bit Marlin around from back then? Because it's got a 32 bit board. It's an STM32 board. So it might be running, but it's, it might be running smoothly. I don't know. Uh, 219 likes. Oh no, we're down. We're at 300. Oh no, but it's like, what, 1104? So, whatever. Um, Yes, make sure you're, you you all like that smash button. Does anyone know of a Prusa Mark II S or 2.5 config for Clipper? I could try it in mine. Um, Okay, so what controller board does the 2.5 have? Does it, the 2.5 has the INZ? Does it have the INZ Rambo? Because if you go on the Clipper uh, GitHub, um, there's a, just search, just go on Google, search Clipper config, and it should bring up this. This is, these are all like the, the, the stock configs for Clipper. So you're going to find stuff for like specific printers, and then you're also going to find stuff for specific controller boards. So like here is for, you know, a Creality CR10, but then they also have, you know, for the Roomba. So if you're running a printer with a Roomba controller board, here's your default config. And then you would just adjust whatever you need to adjust for whatever kind of printer you're running on it. So it should be a Rambo. So if it has a Rambo, then yeah, generic Rambo. So yeah, there's a Rambo config. So you can install, you would install Clipper like you would for an AVR at Mega 2560. Um, here's your stepper X pins, your Y pins, your Z pins, your extruder pins. Um, yeah, and this, there you go. There's your default config. And then you would just have to change stuff. So you would have to go to like, you know, your printer, it's a Cartesian printer, put your max velocity, um, adjust your X and Y limits for whatever your max print volume is. And there you go. So yeah, you can mini Rambo. Okay. Oh, let's see. INZ Rambo. Mini Rambo. Yep, there's a mini Rambo. There you go. So, yep, you, you can run Clipper on it. Pretty much to run Clipper, all you really need to know, um, hopefully there is a stock config. You know what? I think I'm going to try at some point. I'm going to reinstall Clipper on the uh, bonsai down here, and I'll do a video, if I get the time, um, of creating a clipper config from scratch okay because it's very easy if you, you have a stock config right like installing it on the ender 3 v2 was simple because there's configs for the ender 3 v2 it's just copy and paste and you're pretty much good to go same with like the borons we have stock clipper config so if you build it stock with a stock controller board or spec controller board you can pretty much drop in your config uncomment the size of printer you built and you're pretty much good to go um but if you got to make a config from scratch, basically you need to know you need an MCU that is supported. So if you're, you know, using a Duet 2, that MCU is supported. If you're using a, a, you know, the Ender 3 board, that is a supported MCU. So you need an MCU that is supported by Clipper, and most of the modern ones are. And you need to know the pinout of the board. So you need to know, you know, 
what pin is your end stop pins, you know, what pin is your hot end pins, that kind of thing. And if you know those two things, you can create a clipper config from scratch. It's not hard. You just, it's a lot of copy and pasting and just adjusting numbers. That would be awesome. Yeah. It'd probably be a little bit before I could do that because I have to rewire that. I've got all the streams this week. Um, I've got a bunch of stuff to do. Well, Big Chungus is coming along. Yeah, Clipper is great because with Clipper, you saw what happened when I was, you know, if, let me bring up Toasty Boy again. Okay, so say, you know, I, I you know, I'm making a config here, right? So like use main sail or fluid, use one of these default or Clipper specific UIs. That's so easier to edit the config in it. But say I'm making my config here, right? And I have, you know, my step pin is PE2 and I'm making my config in my direction pin. I accidentally put PE2 instead of PE1. When I hit save and restart, Oh, look, pin PE2 used multiple times. Oh no, I done goofed. Oh, okay, let me fix it. Okay. Or say I completely, you know, copy and paste, delete. Oh no, I accidentally deleted my whole uh, stepper X. I, I don't have, oh, look, I, it, it's, there's an error there, right? It, it tells you what's wrong. So Clipper is pretty good for that. And of course I screwed up my config doing that. Let me fix that. Octoprint mandatory. No, you do not need to use Octoprint. You can use either mainsail or fluid. I like fluid personally, but there's two completely standalone interfaces for Clipper that are so lightweight you can run them on a Raspberry Pi Zero. Just uh, don't plan on running a webcam. Settings are rarely changed. Um, there's a better motion planner. A lot of people really like the motion planner and clippers. So like how it actually handles processing movements is much more fluid. It's more consistent. The pressure advance is a smooth pressure advance versus a linear pressure advance that uh, Marlin and I believe also uh, RepRap firmware uses. So with them, pressure advance is kind of like an on off thing, whereas clipper, it smooths it out and it leads to cleaner prints. Um, you also have things like Input Shaper, which Marlin doesn't do. RepRap firmware is getting uh, Input Shaper support. I'm not sure how their implementation of it will be um, because they have the lower power processor. I'm not 100% sure how they're gonna go about it, but you should be okay, I believe. Um, the interfaces, it's quicker, it's snappier, I find. I, as somebody who used both, on all printers, you might not even see a difference in print quality difference, but if you're somebody like me who does print fast, um, you definitely have a lot more overhead with Clipper. You have more room on the top end. And yes, it is very good if you're running an older printer with like an 8-bit board, you slap the Clipper on it, it's running at faster than a 32-bit board. So. Some port of input shaper. I've heard they've like... They have some form of input shaper, but it's based off of using a test print um, and it limits your maximum acceleration. It's not like uh, input shaper where it can automatically adjust 
your speeds and feeds to compensate for it. It just kind of goes, oh, at this point it goes bad and we're going to stop you. Um, and input shaper tuning based off a of print is nowhere near as accurate as using an actual accelerometer on the tool head. Still thinking about how Stalin could have seen Big Chungus. Five pounds. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Hey, Hitler could have seen Big Chungus too. Because that was, uh, what is Big Chungus? I could have sworn it's 41. Big Chungus. 1941. So yes, Hitler could have seen Big Chungus. Accelerometer just dropped. Nice. Does Clipper allow for Wi-Fi printing? It does not. Well, Here's the thing, to run Clipper, you need a Raspberry Pi. There, there's no ifs, ands, or buts. You need a Raspberry Pi or something running the firmware attached to the printer. So you can't run it on just a controller board. You need a Raspberry Pi hooked up to the controller board because the Raspberry Pi does all the processing and it just offloads the actual, you know, it's just telling the controller board what to do. So the controller board and your printer is no longer like, doing the calculations for movement or anything like that anymore. All it's doing is doing exactly what it's told. Move mode of this, move this pin here, adjust this, adjust that. The Raspberry Pi is doing all the thinking. So you need a Raspberry Pi, which means you have Wi-Fi. Yes, you could run a Linux computer, but it's pretty wasteful. Like hooking a desktop up to a printer constantly. A Raspberry Pi is smaller, lighter weight, uh, uses less power. The interfaces are pretty much designed for it. You just install them on an SD card and go. So it's a lot simpler. Do I still use a 3D printed torque wrench to tighten nozzles? What is the recommended torque? Um, yes, I do. On the hot ends that need a, uh, that you need to use a wrench, um, I use one of these guys and I printed it in ABS and it's 1.5 newton meters. I think you're supposed to use 2.5, but when you printed it, it's designed for PETG. And if you print it in ABS, you go down a size or something like that. But yes, I do use this. It's on Thingiverse, just search to, uh, torque wrench. Do I have any videos on uh, wiring the Hall effect? I do not because it's relatively simple. Um, but if you go on the Voron uh, Design website, so help, documentation, and there is a section. I don't know where it is on here. And I'll just search Hall effect. Yeah. So just search Hall Effect End Stop on the Boron Design Help uh, documentation site, and this shows you how to wire it up. So basically, if you look at the pins, there's a VIN, which is voltage in, a Y, X, and ground. So how it works is your Y and X go to your Y and X end stop signal pin. So the one on the X axis, the one on the Y. Your ground can go to one of the, one of the grounds, and then your VIN goes to a voltage in. So it's it's a the board runs at five volts, but it can also run at 3.3 volts. So if you're how I have mine wired up is um no. Is the spider with a Y? Sorry, 
Isaac Spider. Okay. Spider, where's the spider? Spider. Product. Board. Board. A spider. They not have it on there. There we go. Okay, so if you look at the board, uh, bah, bah, bah. okay. Ah, way is in there. Okay, so you have your end stops, okay? So if you look at your end stops, this run right here, PA3, this is where you would put an inductive probe. But if you look at them, you have, you know, PB13 here, this is your Y minimum. You have your signal, your ground, and your voltage in, okay? So what you would do is you would have four wires coming from your Hall Effect end stop. You would have voltage, XY, and ground. So what I would do is for like my Y, I would have the voltage, the ground and the Y signal. And then my X would just need the one signal for X hooked up to the X. So now you're feeding the board your voltage, you are giving it a ground and you have your X and Y end stops hooked up. And that would be it. Yeah, when it comes to fluid or mainsail, pick whichever one you like and think is the prettiest. Like, they're functionally both pretty much the same. Like, they're both actively in development. If one has a feature the other doesn't have, odds are they'll both have it eventually. I just stick with fluid just because I like the interface a little bit better. I like the layout. I don't know. But I still have machines that run mainsail. Like, I'm, I don't know. Problem is, I have machines running mainsail from, like, October. <laughs> I'm really bad at updating some of my machines. Getting there, we're on to the ears. May have just solved your PCB production problems. Uh, okay then. Like, I don't have any printers on right now, but like, th this is, this is fluid. You can change, you know. Um, let me check something here. Yeah, so you can change like colors. So, you know, this is V226. Um, and you can change like the colors and whatnot. You can move stuff around. So, adjust layout. So like right now, you know, I have my, my camera down here, but I, I want my camera up here. So, so now my camera's up here. Oh yeah, and I put a camera in Toasty Boy finally. So, um, hello. in this printer so far um so it is an older printer this is a jg aurora a5s apparently the a5s upgraded um it's having lead screw wobble um but it seems to be okay in actual printing i'm not having any like um drastic issues but um this is this falls under if you can get a good deal on it maybe um buying this new would probably be not worth it it doesn't have any sort of bed leveling. Um, it's using non-silent steppers. It's got a very basic extruder. Yes, it's got a larger print volume. It's 330 by 330 by 320. Um, 
it's not aluminum extrusion, so you're pretty much limited on, you know, doing any huge modifications to it. Um, but, you know, if, if you walk into a pawn shop one day and this was sitting there for 50 bucks, 100 bucks, yeah, maybe. It's a large printer. It is a large printer. It has a heated bed. It does come with the uh, cover and them glass bed. Um, I do like the Y assembly. The base of it, I like. This kind of, I like this. This part I like. The gantry is sheet metal and rattles. So, what camera? It is a random Raspberry Pi camera I got ages ago. It's just a Raspberry Pi camera plugged in. And honestly, it's VHB to the back. Um, like you can see it right there. It, it is literally just a Raspberry Pi camera that I VHB to the back. I still need to put the uh, doors on toasty, but I got the baffles in. So it does have the lights. What would you consider to be a good deal? Well, here's the thing. Um, I know it's, it's certain there are other options out there, but you can get an Ender 3 V2, which does have a smaller volume, but you can get that for 200 bucks. Um, you have the, the Voxel Labs Aquila, um, the Elegoo Neptune 2. Those are like $160, $170. So half the price of this. Um, they have silent steppers. They're 24 volts. They don't rattle. Like, this is an older printer. This is an older printer. Um, but my my post office is open to any company that wants to send me a printer and I will play around with it on stream and whatever. Because it's content and I do a weekly stream, so I need to do something, so. They want to send me it and I'll play with it. And if it's shit, it's shit. If it's okay, it's okay. And if it's great, it's great. It is what it is. I was honestly hoping they had sent me the IDEX because they, they sent me an email saying, hey, we're gonna send you a printer. I'm like, sure. And they're like, okay, we have all these models. I'm like, okay. Okay, we sent the printer. I'm like, okay. And then this showed up. So I didn't even know which one it was because there's a few different companies that said they were gonna send me ones, but this was like three months ago and this one finally showed up. So. Honestly, I would love to uh, do something like this where just anyone sends me a printer and then at the end of the year, like give them away in a raffle. The problem is I live in Canada and shipping would probably be stupid expensive for something like this. So. Because I know most of you guys are in the States or Europe and shipping something that weighs 36 pounds and is like two and a half feet by like three feet by a foot is uh, probably not that cheap. Sometimes maybe good, sometimes maybe shit. Yeah, exactly. And one off quantity. Yeah, TMC 2209s are like just great. For 99% of printers, just throw TMC 2209s at it. Pickup only. Yeah, don't come to my house. Is that in Wisconsin? Well, if I, I live south of Detroit, so that's still a bit away. So here's the here's the marketing. The uh, the imperfections on the, uh, the surface, because this is not half smooth. Like, you could tell this thing is uh, either really inconsistent extrusion or... Um, the surface is just textured and it shouldn't be. So um, it's built in texturing of prints. How often are updates coming in on Clipper? Ah, often enough. They just added um, multi MCU homing support. So theoretically now you could run a single controller board that has all your end stops on it and your heaters. And then you could run each individual uh, motor off of a standalone controller board hooked up over CAN bus and USB or USB. Um, so they're adding like Clipper is getting crazy robust um, for things even outside of 3D printing. Like, um, what is that? Practical printing? Uh, what's it, is it, uh, what's it, no, not practical printing. Uh, uh, what's his name? What's his name? Is it practical printing? I don't know. Uh, he just did his video where he did a, let me find it, let me find it, let me find it. Uh, let me find it. Proper printing, proper printing. Um, there you go. Let me find it. 
Uh, if you're not subscribed to this guy, um, subscribe to him. Same proper printing. Um, he just built a... There you go. Uh, clipper controlled uh, camera slider. And it runs in like Blender. So that whole camera slider is built in Clipper um, using Huvud boards, H U V U U D boards. So they're like. Yeah, so it's a. You made a time lapse uh, camera rig and it's running Clipper. Like. It's getting to the point where you can use Clipper for like more than 3D printing. There's a lot of stuff under the hood that most people will probably never need with Clipper, but the option will be there. So. Proper printing, yeah. So yeah, subscribe to that guy if you're not. He makes good stuff. Do you want to win? Awesome proper yeah. printing merch. There we go. Uh, I've been converting the primary control protocol for Clipper to C so I can use it for more MC part for control project. Um, yes, or as a bed probe. Okay, don't use stall guard as a bed probe. There's too much flex in a bed um, on most beds that it, you're not going to get accurate results. Um, stall guard as a bed probe, no. XY is okay. Don't use it for Z. It's not accurate enough because remember, Stall guard, um, sensorless homing is only accurate to a full step. So don't do it on Z. A, a 10 cent KW10 micro switch off AliExpress is accurate to a single step, a single micro step. So. Oh, it's done. Okay. Well, I guess my G code, ending G code, didn't work. But, uh. Behold, biggest chungus. Yeah, adjust this. Wow. Well, Autofocus. Video. Two volts. That's not what I wanted. Focus. Focus. Yeah, it doesn't want to focus. Okay, whatever. Cool, get off the bed. A little bit of ISO. Never hurt anyone. So hey, finished printing. Ooh, KB3D, $10. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, the park cooling needs work. Well, it's only got a single 3030 in the back. So. Um, how accurate was the print? Oh, I didn't check. Um Slicer estimated an hour 45 minutes. What time do we start printing at? Because right now it's 11.30. I think we started around 9.30, so two hours. So ran a little long, but it was estimating based on accelerations of a Prusa Mark III, and this isn't a Prusa Mark III. So this probably is running slower than that. Okay, come off the bed. Ooh, that is on the bed. You know what? It didn't come with a spatula. So, there we go. And yeah, the bed cleans up pretty good. So we do have a, let me clean up that little bit of uh, excess air printing. Get 
and support for his teeth. Okay. So. Behold. Big Chungus. So, he definitely has that texture all the way around him, and you can see it in the base there. You can see the, uh, that base is supposed to be smooth. Like that, that base, or no, that base does have a little bit of, uh, yeah, this isn't a smooth model. So, it is a nice. Ah, I bumped it. Sorry. I bumped the button. Sorry. I, I noticed the interactions were, were getting low, so I killed the mic so you guys would all spam F to help my uh, YouTube ratings. There you go. F, 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 F. There you go. What was the last thing I said? What was the long, last thing I said? What did I say? What did I say? I don't know. What was I last talking about? Quit. Okay, you can stop with the Fs. You're gonna get timed out. No time out. I'm gonna time you out. I'm gonna time you out. You do one more, I'm gonna time you out. Oh. I said Chungus. Surface of the Chungus. Oh, so I was muted for a while. Um. I was talking about if there was a way to turn off because if you look at the uh, the uh, the surface of the Chungus, I don't know if it'll show up on this camera because the colors are all junk. But he's definitely got like um, a rough texture, a rough pimply texture. Um, and I'm wondering, I want to turn off the power resume feature that this board has. So. Because apparently it does have power resume. So let's take a look here. Where did I put that crappy SD card? Oh yeah. A5S user manual. So apparently it does have power loss prevention. Your assembly, ba, 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 main menu. Boom, replacement. Power, is it power loss? Input power adjustment, page nine. Oh, so on the back you can adjust it. Field protection install. Okay. 
Okay, maybe it doesn't have power loss. I could have sworn it has power loss. Friendly, auto feeding, thermal runaway protection, filament runout. Oh, maybe it doesn't have. No worries about sun. Oh, yeah, power off recovering. No worries about. Hello, are you sure to continue? No worries about. Sun auto memorize for recovery printing. So, the problem with the way a lot of these printers, uh, lower end printers, do it is they're constantly saving to the SD card. So, as it prints, it saves each line that it's completed to the SD card. So, basically, it has a separate SD file that would continue off in the event of a power failure. Uh, the problem with that is because it's constantly saving two things. It causes stuttering on some machines, um, which is basically the hot end stops for a second because the CPU is busy doing other stuff. Um, and it causes these little itty bitty blobs. And two, um, that'll kill your SD card because you're constantly writing to it and a lot of lower SD cards, lower end SD cards can't handle it. So, yeah. So I can't do anything fast on here because it's running Clipper or not. It's not running Clipper. It's running, fuck if I know, uh, what firmware. Um, Marlin or Smoothie? Probably Smoothie if it's 32-bit in 2018. Um, so I can't really easily adjust stuff because the acceleration is dirt slow. So, um, no speed benching tonight. But I think I'm going to call it there. Um, almost done my drink. Marlin still? Okay, so it's Marlin. So, I'm going to call it there. Honestly, it's not bad. Um, if you could find something like this on a good sale, it would give you a good starting point or, you know, something to play with. There are certainly worse options out there. There are certainly better options out there. It is an older printer design. Um, it is what it is. Um, move them all. Um, But hey, for something to play around with, for fun. It's functional, it works. I've seen worse, I've seen better. It is what it is. Hope you all enjoyed the uh, entertainment tonight. Um, as I said, I'll reiterate, uh, this week is gonna be a busy week for me and hopefully for you. Um, I should have an LDO V0.1 kit showing up either Monday, I'm hoping Monday. Um, if it shows up Monday, depending on what time, or Tuesday, I will do a, uh, a live stream. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel, ring that bell, uh, like that smash button, all the other YouTube stuff that I'm supposed to say. So you are notified because I'm going to go live, unbox the kit, we'll go through it, make sure I have all the printed parts and everything's good to go for a V0 build. I'll do some prep work on it. And then all things go well, Friday. 9 or 10 a.m. Eastern, I don't know for sure yet, I'm going to go live. Um, and I'm going to be live all day Friday building a printer. Um, that will be fun. We'll see how it goes. I don't know. I don't think I'll get printing, but I'm going to try and do as much as I can prep-wise, like getting firmware installed on the boards and everything. So that way we can just, just go at it and build it. Um, so that will be that. And then some point during the week, I am going to go live for YouTube members and Patreon. So if you're just subscribed to the Patreon, um, I'll post the link to the, uh, the live stream on the Patreon for YouTube members. Um, it'll be a notification. Um, so yeah, it should be fun. Um, yeah. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, guys. I'll see you either Monday or Tuesday. Be safe out there. Wash your hands. Oh, before I go, if you want to print one of these awesome little helicopter thingies, make sure you check out Fangs. I got a link in the description. They help sponsor the channel, help the content I create, the things I do. They make it all possible and make it easier. So, go make one of these. They're cool.
Goodbye. Okay. Are you serious? Are you serious? I was gonna have it fly at the camera and hit the stop. Uh, try this again. Ready? 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 It was working a minute ago. What the heck? Uh, two seconds to the end of the stream, I decided to get all these technical difficulties. What the heck? It was working earlier. What the heck is going on? Why aren't you working? Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. There we go. Goodbye. <laughs> Have a nice day. Thank you.